in the morning days, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include us with the shahada of Karbala, insha'Allah. It's my honor and pleasure to welcome all of you, brothers and sisters. It's an amazing day, uh, although we are in the long weekend, especially for this, uh, you know, um, lots of families, they may have some plans, but because of the COVID-19, we can take advantage of that, inshallah. Today, we're going to, inshallah, have a little bit long day because we want to, inshallah, go through lots of uh, uh, fruitful and great informations, inshallah, that can navigate us towards where we want to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, inshallah. I would like to uh, mention this point that brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, all of you either are a part of admin, principals, teachers, or volunteers, those who are working in educational system, you should understand that your position is a position of prophets and or imams and position of uh, those who are in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, you are torch, your light, you are guide and you are the hope for lots of families those who are looking for a guidance for the children the ayah which i recited from surah al-jumu'ah this describe the position of prophet in the ummah the job of the prophet so now today in this part of the world, in this crucial time and era, me and you, we will be a true followers and those who are inheritors of the prophets, right? So in that case, mashallah, all the teachers, you as a teacher, volunteer, admin, principal, whatever the position you have, indeed, <coughs> Your position is like a position of prophet in the Ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and give strength and tawfiq. I would like to begin after this beautiful Quranic uh, verses, uh, the hadith from our fourth Imam, Imam Sajjad. Ruhi wa arwahun la'alamina lemaqdam al-fida. Alhamdulillah, just imagine that. Imam Sajjad, the one who was the witness of the tragedy of Karbala, and he is the one who has to take the message of Imam Hussain to the world, and he is the one who is most qualified person in terms of the one who is eyewitness, in terms of the one who can convey the message from Imam Hussain as a ma'asun, the one who is appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on and so forth. And he's capable of, and he's the most qualified and deserving person to take this message to the world. In one of the beautiful hadith, he says, Indeed, me, you, as a parents, as a teachers, as those who take this responsibility, we are responsible, mas'ul. It means we will be responsible on the judgment day before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what we were given the duty. What is our duty? Our duty is to train our children with the best of akhlaq, husnal adab, akhlaq, the way of life. And we should guide them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Through the teachings of Quran and Ahlul Bayt. Quran and Ahlul Bayt are the tools that can take us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who want to reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, other than Quran and Ahlul Bayt, always they will go astray. So Alhamdulillah, this is the beginning. It's my honor and pleasure to announce this great team that Alhamdulillah, together, we can build what Imam Sajjad asked for in this time and era. Alhamdulillah. Let me give you one more deeper hadith from Noble Prophet of Islam. Noble Prophet of Islam, subhanAllah, because he is a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the seal of the prophets and no prophet will be after him is the last messenger. He has to 
provide us. He has to navigate us. And he has to tell us everything to the T. And it's our duty to follow him, right? When he was looking around and he saw a group of children, they're enjoying with the company of beloved Imam Amir al muminin Just imagine that Imam Ali salam back then, instead of being, for example, with, uh, I don't know, some of the great companions and this and that, he preferred to spend his time with the children. He wants to spend his time with the children, subhanAllah, associated with the children. Noble Prophet of Islam, he saw, and he said, فَقَالْ وَيْلٌ لِأَطْفَالِ آخِرِ الزَّمَانِ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ Oh, to the parents of the children of the last, you know, um, zaman, آخِرِ الزَّمَانِ in the last period, which we are, right? Because we are the Ummah of whom, Noble Prophet Islam, those who live in the time of our 12 Imam. And the occultation of what? The era of occultation. He is referring to us. Some of them said, Faqil, Ya Rasulullah. Someone said, Ya Rasulullah, O noble Prophet of Islam. Min Aba Ahmil Mushrikeen, you are complaining to Allah and you are not happy from the parents of the children of the last time from the parents of those who are mushrik? Noble Prophet said, no. Faqallah, no. Min aba'ihmul mu'mineen. This is the hadith, brothers and sisters. Please pay attention. Min aba'ihmul mu'mineen. I am complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the parents of the believers, like me and you. Why? لا يعلمونهم شيئاً من الفرائض They don't focus, they don't teach them, they don't train them to be servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to learn about haram, halal, wajibat, makruhat, mustahabbat, mubahat to learn about the history, aqa'id, akhlaq to learn about Quran and even when they teach the children, when they put the children with the fancy, most expensive schools and they want to drive every day for the school hours and hours and they take care of the homeworks and everything, what they don't teach them is the deen and sharia. They spend everything. SubhanAllah. I mean, brothers and sisters, this is the time we, ha we have to contemp contemplate, think, ponder that how much I'm spending my time towards my children to give them the uh, uh, you know, secular education from the math, science, social studies, language arts, I don't know, all, everything. And if my son is struggling for the math or science and social, social studies, or even language arts, one grade, I want to get a tutor, I want to make sure that he or she has enough help and support everything. But when it comes to the Quran, when it comes to the deen, at the most, I want to send my son in the Sunday school, and I'm expecting that my son, my daughter, should come out as Abu al-Fadl Abbas and Zainab al-Kubra, as Salman al-Farsi and Stumayya. Right? SubhanAllah. That's not happening. <laughs> they are happy that my son are accepted to the highest top notch universities. For example, parents, they will be so happy, proud of the children that my son, my daughter, they got accepted in, for example, Stanford industry or you know, the, the Harvard industry or Yale industry. This is, is good. Again, I'm not saying that those are things are bad. No. I personally want to see my own children. They should be game changer and they should go to the 
best universities possible. That's not a problem, but I should not limit them. I should not be happy that he or she is there. No, that is going to cover my dunya, the dunya of my children. What about my deen, the deen of the children? There, that's what our noble prophet said. So here, the statement of noble prophet O Allah, fa inna minuhum bari'un wa hum mini bari'un. O Allah, know that me and Ali, we are away from them. We don't belong to them and they don't belong to us. SubhanAllah. It's a very clear statement from noble Prophet O oh, Ali, me and you are not belong to them and they don't belong to me and you, period. This is what the noble Prophet Islam's statement, brothers and sisters, very important to understand that when we are looking for something, we need to focus and understand the scope of that. Alhamdulillah. After this hadith, brothers and sisters, let's understand that you as a teacher, I would like to kind of repeat this more and more so all of us can be on the same page. Islamic Sunday school's goal. We don't have a luxury of having every single city, every single area, every single uh, person have access to full-time Islamic environment in Islamic schools. It's impossible because in whole America, we have only 14, 15 full-time schools. Sunday schools is one of the key source of knowledge, guidance for the children. We understand, we should understand that we need to give them the best Islamic education that provides a foundation for implementing the Islamic belief system and values in our children. Why? Because we're looking for the better world with better leaders. My son, my daughter, your son, your daughter, your teacher, your students will be the game changer of future. If we want to see a better you know, future, better world, we need to train the better leaders and leaders are our children. Second, we need to nurture the best akhlaq and morals. We need to you know, give them as an identity. Their identity, should be built in with akhlaq, characters. The third thing is we need to you know, prepare the younger generation to have the leadership skills, qualities, right? We should not train them to be mediocre. Oh, no problem, no. We need to train them to be a leader, not only Islamic educations, not only akhlaq, we need to give them a holistic development facility where they can come out as a great leaders. Just imagine that we think that 25 years Imam Ali al-Islam, he did nothing. No, he did everything, brothers and sisters, subhanAllah. That's why the result of... Uthman bin Hunayf, Sahl bin Hunayf, two brothers, those who are unknown to the people, when Imam Ali Sam take the in charge, he was able to train them to be at great leaders and he sent them to be a governor of Kufa and Basra. SubhanAllah, right? Islamic education, presence is very important that every child has a fundamental right to receive an Islamic education. It is our responsibility to make sure our Islamic education resources are given to the best manner possible. Our goal should be to plant the seed of love and devotion towards Tawheed, Quran and Ahlul Bayt and the hearts and minds and the souls of the children. If we able to plant the seed of love and devotion, SubhanAllah, the Tawheed should come out every aspect of the life, 
They should be walking Quran. They should be ambassador of Ahlul Bayt. Provide the best quality of Islamic education to those who do not have the access. I cannot say, that, you know what? For example, my center is small, big, I might reduce this. No, me and you, we are in the edge, in the, in the, 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 the time and era. We cannot say that because Alhamdulillah, we have access to what? All these technology. Our reach is the globe. And whoever deserve, need, it's our duty to provide that. And also motivate the students to learn about Islam. Even outside of Sunday school, they should not limit themselves to Sunday school. Uh, brothers and sisters, let me give you this very clear picture that lots of times what schools and especially public schools or even private schools, their slogan is, you know what? We don't want to shape the children. We need to give them a freedom of choice. That is a just nonsense sentence. Why? Because in, even in secular education, they're training to be atheist. Systematically, their training is no God. That means they're training. If that is the case, why public schools? They're not giving the same equal platform and pedestal in education about God and non-God, right? But no, anything has to do with the religion, they cross that. So if that is the case, it means we're not training them properly. We are kind of, you know, guiding them towards one path. This we have to understand that. Alhamdulillah, let me give you uh, uh, this uh, complete picture. Uh, I think, uh, Sister uh, Layla, uh, do we have a slide here? Everyone can see these slides or no? Yes. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so uh, the main thing I want to mention here, brothers and sisters, is Okay, so here, Alhamdulillah, LMS is almost uploaded. MashaAllah, Sister Layla, she's here her, with her team. I'm proud of our team, MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah, they work hard day and night to uh, bring this to this situation. I can say for sure what we accomplished in the last couple of months is equal to the work of two, three years of expert, alhamdulillah. So LMS system, Google Classroom is ready. You can have the training. Salaam alaikum teachers will get welcome package. Again, we're talking about two different projects. We have today Salaam alaikum teacher and affiliated schools. Affiliated schools, all those schools, those who are collaborating with Salaam, they have their own principal, they have their own teachers, rosters, and everything, alhamdulillah. And their principal will take care of you know, the package and everything. But I'm talking about Salaam Online teachers, those who are teaching uh, to our uh, Salaam Online students, those who, who don't have uh, access to the Sunday schools. So with handbooks, calendars, Zoom informations, class uh, rosters, and you know timings, and so on and so forth, right? Why? Because inshallah, we're going to start from uh, next week. We have to understand that. We'll share this with collaborating schools too, so they can have the copy and they can uh, adjust and they, if they want to ha have some uh, uh, information, we'll be more than happy to share that. Second, uh, the third, we know Quran is a challenging for all schools. Because what we did with our best ability at this time is to take care of the Salaam online students for Quran, which is different layers. One is the beginners, Qadi Duraniya, and then Mufahim and Tafsir of Quran, and then we have a, a, you know, a memorization of Quran and Tafsir of Quran and so on and so forth, right? What we did is we uploaded, alhamdulillah, Qadir Nurania resources, the app and videos, 
can help students. And Alhamdulillah, we have a great team, Sister Naushin and Brother Rezwan will explain more in today's class, inshallah. And also we uploaded verses of light curriculum, which 48 verses with uh, you know, little bit of teacher's guide. And that also can be accessible to those who are looking for. And also we will be uploaded or uh, you know, uploading, inshallah, a series of hadith, du'as, and surahs for K to seventh grade. And you can, inshallah, have that one. All of that could be a supplemental. It's not going to be the real teaching. So each and every affiliated school, they should do themselves. Alhamdulillah, we are able to put policy uh, by the uh, uh, pilot comp uh, 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 completion of Islamic studies books together for 8 to 12. Inshallah, that will going to be uh, discussed today and you can have a better idea. Brothers and sisters, this is my humble request to all of you to have a teamwork. Contribute. And this is our, our you know, humble appeal for your help. Why? First, because it's going to be first year and we know that lots of glitches, mistakes and all of that. It's not that easy to have a, a nine yard uh, LMS and everything, but we are looking for, be more flexible. Be team player. Every place you see, act as a team player and reach out to us. Be productive. Constructive criticism, appreciate it. I believe that if you don't give your constructive criticism, we cannot breathe. That's a oxygen, you know, uh, the blood of our future is very important. If you have uh, challenges, bring up these challenges. We can brainstorm and we can find the solutions. I know that is going to be all of that ahead of us because it's something we are also in the learning curve and contribute in any way you can. We need your help with assemblies. For example, any school, they have a good system for assemblies, share with each other. I'm sure that all of this work happened with the volunteers and so on and so forth, whether presentations, quizzes, or regarding classes, all of that. And we had very minimum time to go over all of that. You'll find lots of mistakes. Please bring to our attention so we can inshallah fix and we can move on. Again, quizzes also going to be challenges. No doubt this year will be the building year and we can have a best result with your help inshallah. In a nutshell, uh, brothers and sisters, salam online. Again, this can just repeat of what we said before. Uh, is providing uh, Islamic uh, you know, Sunday school, uh, which is synchronous and asynchronous for all the students, those who don't have any access. The second thing is very important that Salam Online will try to be a, a hub for resources, uh, different curriculums, projects, booklets, and so on and so forth. Even the booklets of Ramadan, Muharram, all of that want to upload that so people they can have that in one uh, inshallah place and also salam online will try to provide a bank of resources to start and enhance uh, any sunday school they're looking for any help inshallah will be uh, uh having uh, teachers training classes throughout the school year uh, inshallah we're going to be uh, announced and it will be open for everyone those who wants to inshallah be part of that and also salam online will try to create a global community by uh, contacting teachers, parents, students, administrations uh, to one another. This is also going to be a big uh, change, inshallah. Uh, slowly, we can build the global Islamic Ahlulbayt community, inshallah. We'll be creating a WhatsApp group uh, with all Sunday school teachers to help uh, communicate uh, all resources we are developing, inshallah, for example, in Maryland or in even Australia, in New Zealand, in Europe, and you know, anywhere, whether United States or everywhere. If someone has that, inshallah, we can bring together 
together and we can learn from each other and we can inshallah help each other try to try to create a process of collaboration among us these schools this is also it's not only us we are uh, appealing you guys you can also be part of that try to provide a platform for the growth of ideas and initiatives why because maybe some of the schools or some of the people or some of the teachers even some of the uh, students if they have a brilliant ideas we want to bring that and want to inshallah uh, uh, you know uh, uh, give the platform so then we can grow the ideas and we can inshallah have the best uh, result so now, brothers and sisters, it's my honor and pleasure to announce the Salam Online team. Although when I say Salam Online team, each and every one of you will be the team, right? But this is the team, inshallah, we have. So we have a mission team, we have administrative team, and we have advisors. And we have IT team, and also we have an international Salam team. So let's go for so with mission teams, we have, alhamdulillah, uh, I would like to uh, introduce Morna Sayyid Jawad Wahidi. Hajra, you're here, Sayyid Jawad Wahidi. Yes, salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. What a great light, Hajra. You should not keep this light in limited to uh, San Antonio. Let this light, uh, you know, bloom everywhere, mashallah. Thank you, Zakallah. Thank you. So Hajagaya Sayyid Jawad Wahidi will be uh, the go person and you will see uh, for any help and any support, especially for the assemblies and also is going to uh, be a, a Quran, uh, you know, a support and help and head of the Quran uh, system, inshallah. Uh, uh, we're going to, inshallah, have, I'm going to announce about our administrative, administrative team, but he's kind of a, a go alim, a go person for all these areas, inshallah. And also we have uh, uh, Sheikh Salim Yusuf Ali, who is the uh, Rise Academy Dean of mission and also here as, as assistant resident alim in Sabah Bay Area, alhamdulillah, and he's a great asset. And sister Sabika Methani, she will going to be uh, uh, there for every help uh, those who are looking for, and she's a backbone and key for lots of areas, mashallah. And also we have a, a, a alim advisors, mashallah alim advisors, we have 10, 12 alim advisors, we're going to inshallah present that, and anyone who wants to get some help, they can go and they can help. Now for the administrative team, Alhamdulillah, Brother Azhar Ali, he will be acting principal this year. And although we have a great team people, but because of lots of uh, uncertainties, what we did is we want to kind of optimize our uh, system, what we have. Alhamdulillah, Brother Azhar, uh, he uh, graciously agreed to be a acting principal for Salam Online team. And Sister Wajma, Sister Wajma, you are here, Sister Wajma? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Sister Wajma, she's going to be a vice principal and she's going to be the main go person because Brother Azhar may not be accessible that much, but you will see that Sister Wajma, she will be there uh, in all the areas for the communication, PR, reaching out to the people and teachers and so on and so forth. She will uh, uh, be the co-person. Alhamdulillah, she has a great uh, uh, you know, uh, energy, talent, and I'm proud of her, mashallah. And also we have a sister, uh, Uruj Kazimi. You are here, sister Uruj? Yes, I'm here, Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. Sister Uruj, she's uh, an educator and principal of more than two decades or close to two decades in uh, Sabah Sunday School and also all the books you see, Structure Perfection and all of that. In the beginning, uh, it was managed and compiled and a great uh, effort done by Sister Uruj and her team. Uh, uh, Sister Samina, Sister Uruj and her team, may Allah bless all of them. She will be go going to be, inshallah, uh, support principal for Sister uh, Wajma. So she's going to be with Sister Wajma, inshallah, uh, will be with you. And Brother Azhar, you are here, Brother Azhar? Yes, ma'am. Asalaamu Alaikum. MashaAllah, your light is great, brother. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Thank you, brother. It's a reflection of your light, Mulana. It's not mine. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, you see the great team. Now, we have Sister uh, Layla Khan. Sister Layla, you're here? Assalamualaikum. Yes, I'm here. So, you see, all of this, what will happen, you can see that 
Sister Laila, she has a great contribution towards that. Alhamdulillah. Sister Laila, she's working with Sister Sabika and also her team. Alhamdulillah, those who did a fantastic job. Uh, Sister Sana, Sister uh, Zainab, and I, I don't want to just mention a couple of names because I know that as a tens of people, they work with Sister Laila, and Sister Laila, her uh, great leadership is uh, amazing. Thank you, Jazakallah, Sister Laila. And then we have uh, uh, Brother Rizwan and Sister Naushin. You are here, Brother Rizwan, Sister Naushin. So they are heading the uh, Qaidi Nurania department. Uh, Alhamdulillah, the Qaidi Nurania department, which is the first layer for learning Quran. Uh, and you will see that Sister Naushin and Brother Rizwan, they will be uh, uh, everywhere, Alhamdulillah, in terms of assessment and giving the lectures or teaching them and bringing the teachers. and and more alhamdulillah they will be there alhamdulillah and then we have advisors so advisors we have hajagai amir mithani the one who is a founder of imamia education uh, 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 you know the entity which we are using for uh, al kisa foundation hajagai amir mithani you are there Yes, alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. I know that you are, mashallah, there here at the, in, in Toronto. Inshallah, we're going to uh, uh, come back soon this week, inshallah. Uh, Brother Abbas Molu, uh, you're here, Brother Abbas Molu? Assalamu alaikum. Yes, I'm here. Wa alaikum assalam, mashallah. Great, alhamdulillah. So, Brother Abbas Molu and Brother Azhar Pirbhai, you're here, Brother Azhar Pirbhai? And Sister Zainab Khan from Maryland. Sister Zainab Khan, you're going to be, uh, you're here? Sister Zainab Khan. She is a principal uh, from Idare Jafaria in Maryland. Alhamdulillah, she's also a great source of blessing for all of us. Alhamdulillah. So these are the uh, advisors. Yeah. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum, Sister Zainab. How are you, Sister Zainab? Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Malana. Thank you so much. Thank you. So honored to have you as our advisors, mashallah, for Islam Online. Thank you, Zakallah. And also, we have an IT team. IT team is uh, 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 Ishaq, uh, Ishraq, and also uh, uh, we have Sister Sana, Sister Zainab. So these are the uh, uh, you know, four people who will be IT help and support, inshallah. And also, we have a Salam International coordinators and those who are taking care of this uh, in, uh, international, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, uh, project. Uh, so we have for Europe and UK, uh, Brother Bakar uh, Naqabi. Brother Bakar, you're here. Uh, Sister uh, Sakina Ahsan for uh, Middle East and Asia and also the, for the India, Pakistan, Middle East and uh, so on and so forth. Sister uh, uh, Sakina Ahsan. And we have for the uh, New Zealand and Australia, uh, Brother Sayyid uh, Jafari and also Sister Elia. Uh, so this is our team, alhamdulillah, with lots of incredible uh, uh, you know, people behind the scene, those working. So it's my honor and pleasure to announce all of them, alhamdulillah. So uh, brothers and sisters, this year, all this is going to be first year because of the pandemic situation, all of that happening as a kind of blessing. And we have to take every moment as a, a opportunity and chance to uh, you know, uh, make it uh, 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 in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we uh, will be pleased, inshallah, we can stand on the judgment day with noble prophet of Islam and beloved Imam Amir al -Bamini. Alhamdulillah, this is what I have so far. Alhamdulillah, so Sister Layla, uh, go ahead and take care from this point onwards. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Um, my name is Leila, as um, Alan introduced me. I've been helping out with operations with a team of wonderful uh, volunteers. And uh, with that, I'd like to just say what an honor it is to be here with all of you. Um, there's 152 participants right now, which really shows the beauty of Sunday School. 
I grew up in the system. I went to Sunday school since I was, I graduated from Sunday school and I, I definitely can see how it shaped me. And so I'm very proud and um, honored to be a part of this team. Um, I want to just take a minute to remind everyone to um, register for this training at tinyurl.com um, slash salam online. I'll put it in the chat. And um, inshallah, we will be continuing with our orientation, but I would like to say that if you do need to take a break, if it's in a month, it's, I don't think it's time for a salah, or, but when it does um, become time for salah, then you can go ahead and take a break because this whole session is being recorded and we will send it to everyone. Um, so also that's why it's important to register because I'll just use those emails that have been um, registered to send out the recording, inshallah. Um, okay, and with that, I would like to just go over the agenda. So we're going to be talking about the Google Classroom training. Sister Sana will be going through all the different aspects of it. Then uh, Sister Mona, who, is, um, who has 14 years, 15 years experience uh, teaching Sunday school and who is a regular teacher at RISE Academy. She's been working at, for five years at RISE Academy. She will be going over some teaching strategies and then I'll take uh, over to do the Zoom training and some teacher guidelines we have for our Salam Online teachers. And then we have our guest, uh, we have a guest speaker, um, Brother Amin Asir from Noor Kids, who will be sharing some videos that he, his team has created to supplement um, Islamic studies. And then we'll hear from the Kaidan Rania team, and then we'll go through some action items at the end. So with that, I'd like to invite Sister Sana, who has been doing an amazing job, to talk about the Google Classroom training. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Um, thank you, Sister Laura, for introducing me. I hope you are all doing well. Um, so I'm super honored to be able to introduce to you the Google Classroom that we'll be using at the LMS. Um, so I'm going to give you a walkthrough by sharing my screen. And then um, I'll pause for questions at the end of certain sections. So at that time, you can feel free to either unmute yourself and ask questions or type them in the chat. And I'll try my best to answer them. Um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. Um, so, inshallah, you can all see my screen. Um, so, I'm going to start by starting with Google like um, everyone normally would and show you what the email would look like um, when you want to um, get into the Google Classroom. So I'm going to go to my Gmail account um, and go ahead and log in. And after doing that, um, I should have an email in my inbox from admin at Salam Online, which is right here. And I'm just going to open that up. Um, and all of you should also um, get this email. You'll get an email from admin at Salam Online to be a co-teacher for the specific grade that you're teaching. Um, if you have a Salam Online email account, then um, make sure to use that email account to log in. So I'm just going to go ahead and click join, and it will take me automatically to the Google Classroom. Um, and so see here, this is something that might happen to you as well. And so um, it's using my mom's um, email account, but what I want to do is click on this and make sure that I'm using my actual email account. Um, that I logged in with. So um, now it's going to take me to the class board. I'm just going to click accept. Yes, I want to teach grade four. And after taking me to the class board, um, I will start introducing you to the four sections of the LMS. So here we have, um, welcome to the LMS. Um, we have four different sections, the stream page, the classwork page, the people page, and the grades page. Um, now you can flip between these different pages. And if you want to go back to the original stream page, you just click here um, to grade four. So um, I'm going to start by introducing you to the people page. As you can see here, the people page um, has teachers and students. Right now, I'm a teacher. Um, this is me. 
Um, and so if I want to go ahead and invite a co-teacher, let's say, I would click this invite teachers button. And let's say I want to invite Sister Sabika as a co-teacher. So I would type in her email address. I would click it here in the search result and I would click invite and it will send her an email invite. Uh, one thing to note here is that we want to make sure that when you're doing that, you don't want to remove Salam Online as a co-teacher because we're still uploading documents and resources to help you um, and to make it easier for you. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind. And now after showing you how to invite a co-teacher, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to invite students. So to invite students, you would do the same thing. Click this little icon um, and type each of the students' email addresses. So for example, if I wanted to invite Sister Layla, I would type her email address and click the invite button. That can be a little tedious if you have a lot of students. So the second way to invite students is to go to the stream page and this, this thing called a class code. So I'm gonna display it by clicking this, these four buttons. And as you can see, there's like this little cute code, G, R, Z, et cetera. And so what I can do is, um, let's say this is the first meeting of Sunday school I'm having and um, I'm meeting with my class on Zoom. I can share my screen and display this code. From there, the students can take this code and actually um, add on to the Google Classroom themselves. And I'll be showing you um, how students can do that in a little bit. So now I'm going to go back to the people page um, and I'm going to stop really quickly for questions. Let me know if anyone has any questions about inviting teachers or inviting students. I had a question. Um... Uh, sure, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, if we have first graders, so the kids won't have emails, do we put their parents' email as an invite or to join the class or something like that? Um, so if the student doesn't have an email, then you can use um, the parents' email, like if they're elementary schoolers, but I think um, there will be... Um, inshallah more clarification on that. I think um, the best thing to do would be to use the parents email though. Um, okay. for, for Salam Online, sorry Sana, uh, for Salam Online we'll be asking um, parents to create emails for this because um, isn't it that the name comes up from the email address so just right. to so they can con keep control of the uh, email but then um, because it's your name is associated with your email under students so if it's a parent's email the parent's name will come up so they, they will create a brand new email address for this particular thing yes. or the kids email address yes Just they'll like create a uh, an email for the for their kids okay so I, will, and this will go ahead ahead of time before the school starts so that they can you know set this up and everything right okay so I am alaikum sister Sana. Uh, are you guys gonna send the initial email from Salam online to all of us so we could start or we're gonna have to set it up ourselves? Um alaikum salam, yes, we will be sending you this initial email, the one that I showed you. Um it will be coming from admin at Salam Online. Um and it will have that uh, blue join button um as I clicked and like then from that you'll be able to join. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. alaikum, sister. My question is uh, about um, inviting students through the email. Does it have to be a Gmail account? Uh, not talking about the code, but uh, inviting the students through the um, email. Um, well, like Islam, I think that um, if you're inviting the student through email, it does not have to be um, just a Gmail account, but for their ease and access, just because oh. Um, the Google Classroom has links to Google Calendar and also to the um, Google Drive. It might be better if they use a Gmail account. It might be easier for them to use it. And then the G, uh, the G Suite you have, it does not have the capability to create emails for a student. Um, I think Sister Layla can probably better answer that. Sorry, can you repeat the question? So I, I just wanted to confirm that we cannot create emails through the G Suite for the students. And like not, through, students. Uh, not through ours, but if you do have a nonprofit, then you can register um, 
register for a G Suite. I believe you can also register for an uh, um, G Suite for Education, uh, but they will ask for um, the nonprofit code and okay. the uh, domain name, which should okay. be dot education. Okay. I just want to clarify, uh, brother, for everybody's uh, use case as well. Um, what Sana, Sister Sana is talking about here is specific to Salam Online. Like if you're affiliated with another Sunday school, you're not going to get a Salam Online account, right? So you need to have your own uh, domain, like Sister Lena is saying. Uh, like, let's say, for instance, with Saba Sunday School, um, our teachers are part of the saba-igc.org domain. So um, we're creating accounts in sabah-idc.org for them. This is specific to Salam online students uh, and what they and teachers and what they'll be receiving. Um, okay, so my understanding was uh, that um, even though we will not be part of the Salam online, but we will still have the classrooms created by the Salam online tech team for our school. Uh, for our teachers, um, and we still will be getting the link. That's how I understood it in the initial conversation, but please clarify if that's not true. Um, that's correct, yeah. So these class boards will be um, for all of the collaborating the schools as well, and I'm going to go more into the organization of like how the class board works. Um, if anyone else doesn't have any questions, I, just for time's sake, I can go ahead and move on and address more questions later. Yes, um, I do have a question, I'm sorry. Um, so I think when we get uh, when we get the invite to accept the class, I'm assuming that the class will be already formed with the emails added, the students added to our class, isn't it? Not that we have to be adding since we don't have that information. Yeah. Are you a Salam online teacher or a class? So I'm like, then, uh, yes, I think we will either be sharing the ch uh, the emails with you to add it, or um, someone will help you guide uh, with that. Okay, thank you so much. Same for uh, Sunday school as well. Sorry, go ahead. Same for Sunday school as well, that uh, they will add it to our accounts and then we know the kids, or do we have to do it in person? Uh, for collaborating Sunday schools, um, we will add your point person, um, the person that you added on the form. He, he, will, he or she will um, invite the co-teachers and then we'll, um, they can assist you through adding the students. And um, yeah. Yeah, they can use that class code to share with the students so that um, the students can um, add themselves. Um, so um, if there's no more questions, I can go ahead and just move on quickly to the classwork page. Um, and so this classwork page ha probably has the most information on it in terms of all the pages. Um, it's organized by topic. So as you can see here, the first topic is Zoom link. The next one is resources. And to get to uh, different topics, you can just click. Um, so I click Quran and it took me to the Quran topic. Um, I can click back. So um, the reason we have Zoom links at the top is because um, it's easy for students to be able to access the Zoom links. We want them to um, have access and to edit any of these. Um, actually, one thing to quickly note is that all of these are drafts. So you can see here it says draft, draft. Um, and if you scroll down, it says draft. So a draft is not um, seen by students because it's not published. And the reason uh, that we do that is right now, um, only teachers can see it and you can choose what to publish and when to publish it. So I'm gonna show you that right now. Um, for example, let's say at my Sunday school, um, I want to edit this. So I would click edit material um, and then um, I can edit the title. If I don't have an assembly, I can take it out. Um, I can also edit the description. So I just would paste my Zoom link into the description and then um, I can go ahead and post or I can click this button and schedule a post or save a draft. So scheduling a post would be, for example, um, let's say I want to schedule it for tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. So I'd click here tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. and I would just click schedule and it, it would schedule it for that time. Um, for now, I'm, I'm just going to save it as a draft. And then I'm going to go back. Um, here 
And so now that we are done with the Zoom links, we're going to name the other. Abhishek Nindaji. Yes, yeah, so, 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 if you can um, make it more clear, wise, because some of some people they can't hear you. Please, can you be louder? Sure. Um, so for the resources, um, this is the second part of it, and so um, resources include the teacher's guide, which is currently a draft, as you can see. So I'm going to click on this PDF, um, and so when I click on it, it will open. For some of the PDFs, they're very large files, so they may not open like this nice preview we have here. So for those ones that don't open, I'm gonna click this, this, um, these three buttons right here, and I'm gonna click open in a new window. So it's gonna take me to a new window, and from this window, I'm gonna actually be able to download the PDF onto my computer. So I would click, and I would click download. Um, and that's if it doesn't preview. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to um, open up the, oh, and keep in mind, so right now this teacher guide is a draft. And so if you publish it or post it, all the students will be able to see it. So um, if you don't want students to see this um, teacher guide, you would just leave it as a draft. And then we have the student textbook here which is also you're able to preview it. Um, if you're not able to preview it, you would follow the same process and you would click the three buttons um, and open it in a new tab and download. Uh, one thing that I thought is um, nice to know about the some of the student PDFs is that if you click on the page number, it'll take you to that page number directly. Um, and again, students can't see this right now because it's a draft, so you would just edit the material and click post. So um, now we're going to move on to oh, here. We also have project booklets that are from um, the Elkisa Foundation, and we've just added them here to make it easier for you in case you want to use these extra resources. Um, we will be adding more shortly. So next, I'm going to move on to the administration section. Um, here we have an attendance form template. So this attendance form template is a draft. So when I click on attendance form template, it will open up a um, Google Sheet, which we have created for you to make it easy for you to take attendance. And um, one thing to note here is that when you open up this form, you're able to um, edit it. But what you want to make sure to do is go to file, make a copy, um, and then type in, you know, for example, the name of your, the grade, this would be grade four. So then I would just click okay, and it would make a copy for me. And the copy is what I would edit. So now I'm just gonna explain, uh, so here you can put in the grade. So for example, this would be grade four. So I would just put grade four. Um, here is, it's assembly is written. You can also adjust this if you have a different period, for example, period one, period two, etc. You can um, adjust the student's name and fill in the names of your students. Um, P is for present, L is for late, and A is for absent. Um, and then we're still working on the formulas, so hopefully it should tally all of that data at the end of the form. There's also different tabs. So for example, this would be Quran's attendance. This would be Islamic studies attendance. Um, and then this is the key to tell you like kind of what each letter means. Um, now going back here, let's say you have more students than what's listed here. Instead of just um, inserting one row above or below, an easy way to insert rows is let's say I wanna insert 10 rows. I would just write the number 10 here and I would click add. Now it automatically added 10 rows for me. Um, so now that we have gone over the attendance form, I'm gonna go back to the Google Classroom. Um, and here in the administration section, we will be adding additional documents to make it easier for you um, to take attendance and uh, grading, things like that. So moving on to the Quran section, um, here we have the Quran curriculum, which is based on the Qadha uh, Nirania curriculum, as um, Mulana said earlier. 
So this is a PDF that will open up. There's also um, these YouTube videos that you can um, show your students. Right now, keep in mind, this is a draft. So um, if your students, if you want it to be visible for your students, you would just click the post button to publish it. Um, there's multiple different lessons. And if you click view more, you can see there's also at the end some additional resources that we've added to make it um, more helpful for the students and for you as a teacher. Then we have the Aqaid section, the fix section. May I, may I ask a question? <laughs> um, once you add students into like in the beginning of the, does it create automatically a attendance sheet or uh, it, this is, has to be also created separately? So um, the attendance sheet is something, it's, it's a template. So um, for your specific class, you would make a copy of the attendance sheet and then you would fill in your students' information um, into the attendance sheet. So as they don't communicate with each other, like adding the list of a student will, add, add, will be added to the attendance. No. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Thank I you. Hope this is your question. No problem. Um, okay, so um, the FIC, Aqaid History, and um, Akhlaq section are all organized in the same way. So they're organized by lesson number. So lesson 1.1, 2.1, 3.1, etc. So here, um, I'm just going to show you based on the Akhlaq 2.1 section, how they're organized. Um, so here we have lesson 2.1, which is thankfulness. Um, and this little icon here shows me that this is a material post. So material just means PDFs, Google Slides. Um, and this icon shows me that it's an assignment. So if I post it to students, I can actually set a due date um, and have it be graded. And I'll, I'll show you uh, that in just a second. So for now, I'm going to show you on this lesson 2.1, each of the lessons come with a Google Slide um, presentation. And um, here we have the presentation. Each presentation is organized. The, the title slide has the lesson number um, and then the title of the lesson, thankfulness in this case, um, the grade number, and also the page number that is the page number in the actual curriculum. Then the second slide of each of the presentations um, is the idea of starting with Bismillah. Law. Uh, then we go into the slides themselves and our content creators have been working diligently on creating these um, slides for all of our wonderful Sunday School students. Then we have here the exit ticket, which is the last slide of all of the presentations. Um, and that is just a check-in that you can do with students um, at your discretion. There'll be more about the teaching strategies you can use with the exit ticket in the next session. So I'm gonna go back to um, here, the um, grade four board lesson 2.1, and I'm gonna start um, opening up this PDF, which is the PDF of the curriculum. So you can see here, um, students can actually also read the curriculum. Um, and we've added the curriculum here to make it easier as well. Um, there's also a worksheet that's added and a coloring um, activity that's added here. So now um, that we've covered the materials section, I'm gonna open up this worksheet, which is um, a 2.1 worksheet. And I'm gonna edit this assignment. And um, here um, we can see that the worksheet has, um, it's a 10 point value. I can adjust that as a teacher if I want to 20 points or 30 points, et cetera. I can also assign a due date. And when I assign a due date, that will show up on the students um, their Google Classroom and they'll be able to see it. So let's say I want to assign this due date for um, Friday, September 11th at 11.59. Um, and then I would go ahead and actually click the assign button to post it. Um, then I would go ahead and assign the worksheet. And once I do that, the, a worksheet will show up in the student stream. And I can see here um, how many students have turned it in um, and um, all of that um, data kind of like shows up here once I publish it for students to see. So um, now I'm going to go back to the I have, a I have a question. What yeah. about the 
And how do the students do the coloring? I mean, the worksheet, they can probably, what did they have to type it and send it back, right? It's done right online? Oh, uh, yes, that's a very good question. Let me actually um, go ahead and explain that. So for this worksheet, um, the students will actually have to download the worksheet. So they'll click these three buttons. They'll open mm. it in a new tab and then they'll download the worksheet so that they can um, edit it, whether they want to write on the computer. If they have a PDF reader, they can annotate it or they can download it um, and then scan it back um, to the computer. And then same thing for the coloring. Um, once you assign the coloring to them, let me go to coloring. Um, I would just um, tell them that basically they just would download this. So they would open it in a new PDF um, and then they would download it and then they can color on it, whether it's from um, like if they have a PDF annotator or they can just download, print it out, color it and um, scan it again. Does it answer the question? Okay, and then um, after I had a scan, uh, uh, how, how do they attach, they have to attach it and send it back into this program? I don't understand how will they, how will we get it back from them? Sure, um, so I'll be explaining from the student view how um, you can submit and attach an assignment in a little bit. Basically on their portal, they would be able to, um, you know, like upload any document that's from their computer or from their Google Drive um, and submit it as a student. Okay. But, but again, I'll be showing that um, the student view um, shortly. Okay. I have a question. Uh, when you do an assignment, uh, does it automatically create a folder saying the assignment number and when the kids, you know, send a picture back to us, it goes directly into that assignment folder? Like assignment 2.1, so all the 2.1 assignments will directly go to the 2.1 assignment? Um, yeah, so that's a really good question. So um, with each of these, um, I, I don't know if I would call it a folder per se, but I think like each of these assignments from a, a teacher's perspective, if I click on this worksheet 2.1, you can see, I can see as a teacher, how many people, how many of my students have turned it in and um, how many are missing it. You can see that from the, the grading view. Um, so you'll you'll be able to see that data is is that um does that answer your question uh no like for example my kid is doing the same thing right now but i'm on the t student side and what the teacher does is she gives an assignment right so we do it uh, in hand like coloring or writing or whatever and then we take a picture from our phone or whatever or download it like you said and then we uh, click on her assignment where it says assignment we click on it and it says uh add attachment so we at, uh, attach our homework or whatever and we start to turn it in it says click turn in and for some reason which is great that all the assignments go to that particular assignment for uh, assignment folder um so uh, when you're submitting an assignment as a student then you would submit it. For example, if I was a student and I wanted to submit this assignment, uh -huh. I would just upload the attachment as you said, and then I would submit it. Um, I'm not sure about any um, it going to any folder. Maybe you're talking about um, the Google Drive folder. Okay. Um, I think that's something that's up to the discretion of the teacher too. Okay. Um, as to how you want to use your um, Google Drive folder, which is shared with all of your students, and also your Google Calendar, which is also shared with all of your students. Um, they can see it, and then the teacher can create events on the Google Calendar. And then here we have the Meet link, which um, if you prefer to use Google Meet instead of Zoom, you can use um, Google Meet. Okay, thank you. No problem. So, uh, Sound good, sister. Can I just ask one more question, please? Sure. So um, <clears throat> since we will be one of the collaborating schools, um, when we have the classroom created uh, through our point person, we will have uh, the material uploaded, but my understanding is that we would not have the Zoom link. That will be our own Zoom link that we need to post it there. This Zoom link is specific for your, because um, uh, each classroom will it come pre-populated with uh, all the material and everything. And the only thing we need to add is Zoom link or um, how will we have the classrooms for yeah. a collaborating school? Yeah, so um, that's correct. So um, for collaborating schools, the classroom will look exactly like this. 
Um, so it will come pre-populated with all these drafts. Um, and then for the Zoom link, if you want to add it, um, you know, it would be specific to your collaborating school. So you would just click edit material and you would paste the Zoom link um, into this and then post it for students to see. Um, other things such as the teacher guide and the student textbook and all of these resources and um, administration, Quran, et cetera, all of these different topics, they're, they're pre-populated basically. Okay. And how about the Meet? Do we have access to Meet or? Yes, you do have access to Meet both from the classwork page and from the stream page. So if you prefer your students to Meet using this Meet link, um, you can give them this link and then you guys can meet using that link instead. Or they can even like, it, would all, it will always be on this classroom. So um, the student, when they have access to the classroom, they can just come here and click on it and go to their Sunday school class. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, sister, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, you know, I have a classroom in my school and I wonder if I can use your code to join your class. Is that okay for you? So I can see the material. Um, sorry, can you repeat the question? Is that okay for you guys if I use this class code to join your classroom? Oh, this one here? Yeah, yeah. Are you from Salam Alain or from? Um, no, I'm from ICOC, the collaborating schools. Okay, uh, so I think we will give the, um, we will invite your point person and then they can invite you and okay. you can, yeah, you can discuss it with them. Inshallah. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Uh, Sana, can you just go over the Google Classroom app as well? Yes, sure. Um, so the, the next thing that I'll be showing you, I guess from the student view, um, how to view, um, how to join, because that might be something that you have to explain to your students. So I'm gonna, come out of this and I'm going to go into a different email account. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to get to Google Classroom on like a daily basis when you don't have that email. So I'm going to go here to these like this app button basically in my email. I'm going to scroll all the way down and I'm going to click Classroom. So from there it's going to take me to the classroom. Um, and so this is a different email account. Keep in mind sometimes it will show up differently. So I wanna make sure that I'm um, clicking here and going to the email account that I just logged in with. So let's say I'm a student and this is my email address. I'm gonna click on this. And then I'm gonna go ahead um, and click this plus button. And to join the class, I now have the class code. I'm gonna put the class code in here. Um, and then I'm gonna click join and it will join me into the classroom. So this is the student view. Right now, I'm a student in this class and this is what I'm um, seeing. So as a student, you, you only have access to three tabs, the stream, the classwork, and the people page. So here in the stream, I can see, um, oh, my teacher assigned something, a worksheet, and I can click on the worksheet. Um, I, can, I can see, okay, the worksheet is 10 points. Um, I can open this up and I can download it so I can edit it. I can also make a comment to the class. Let's say I have a question. If this, um, if I make a comment here, it goes to the entire class. And if I make a comment here on private comments, it just goes to the teacher. So then I can also add my work. Um, I can create a new document from docs, slide sheets, or drawings. I can also um, attach a document from the Google Drive or from my computer. So to attach something from the Google Drive, I would just click on that um, and attach whatever was needed. If I wanted to upload it from my computer, I would click upload, browse, and then I would attach whatever was needed from my computer. So I'm just gonna mark this as done. Um, and then I'm gonna go back to here um, to the teacher view now. So now I'm back in the teacher view um, and I'm gonna go to the grades. And now this grades, you can see here, um, there's only one student right now, which is me in this classroom. So um, I just turned in that worksheet. So um, the worksheet was out of 10 points. So as a teacher, I can say, okay, the student got 10 out of 10 and I would just enter it in. Or they got eight out of 10 and I would just enter it. 
Um, I can also click on the individual student to see their grade report, like what they've turned in, what they're missing, and what um, is returned to them. So when I go back to grades, um, let's say I want to return this worksheet back to students so they know what score they got. So I would click these three buttons and then I would click return all. So all of the grades would go back to the students. So I'm going to return it. So they'll be notified they got an eight out of 10. So I'm going to return it to them. Um, and then you can also, uh, let's say you need to contact the student. You can also email them and you, need, you can include a work summary. So it will include all of the assignments they've turned in in the classroom and all of their grades. So then you would just type whatever message you want to include um, in that. So I'm gonna go back here. Um, and then there's also settings here if you click. Um, and that's also up to the discretion of the teacher as to how much you want to um, change the settings. But um, now I can go ahead and take questions that you guys may have. Um, I can stop. Sister, um, Dana, this is uh, Wajma. I had a question. If you have a TA in your classroom um, and you're, you already invited them and they accepted it, um, is there a place where you can have instructions for them on what to do, what not to do, how to return it into students and how to communicate to students so they can um, back you up, for example, if you're absent or if, um, is there something that they can use? Um, definitely. So as a, as a TA, um, you would invite them as a co-teacher. Um, and then as a co-teacher, they'll be able to have access to all of the drafts in the classroom. So what I would recommend is um, if you have information that, for example, that you don't want students to see, but you want your TA to see, leave that post as a draft. Um, and then the TA will be able to see that. Thank you. So um, whatever is published, the students will see, but if it's not published, um, then they can't access it. Thank you. No problem. Sister, uh, I have two questions. Yeah, go ahead, please. I'll, I'll ask later. Thank you. Uh, when, so for example, I have a student with five kids and I've given them the assignment and they've all submitted it through attachments. Where are these attachments? For me to go and view and then I'll have to create. So where do I find them? Um, as a teacher, from the teacher perspective, you're saying yes, like- Yes, as a teacher, right, yeah. Okay, yes, um, that's, that's a good question. So I will go ahead and actually share my screen with you right now and show you um, how to view them. Okay, so I'm a teacher right now um, and I'm gonna go to classwork and I'm gonna go to that worksheet. Actually, I'm gonna just go to stream. I'm gonna go to the worksheet so I can see when I click on the worksheet, this is the assignment that I've assigned. I can see, okay, um, that I've graded one of them. They've turned it in. I can also click on this person and I can see their, the assignment, but because I marked it as I didn't attach anything, right now you don't see anything. Um, th that's the reason why. But like when you um, see like here, this is my individual, this is the student. So like, I can see the student, what they've added right here. Um, but because I didn't attach anything, there's nothing here. Does that, does that help? Can you please um, navigate us through attaching um, to, to see how the student will see it or how you will see it after a student submits work? Sure, so let me actually go ahead and actually submit something. Um, and then from a student view, so right now I'm logging in again as a student. And then I will actually attach and submit something. So I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to click add. I'm going to go to the Google Classroom. And just as a test, I'm going to go ahead and submit um, this PDF. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and upload it from the computer because that's usually what students do. So I'm gonna upload something from the computer. For example, this is a screenshot and I'm gonna open it um, and it's gonna start uploading. And then I'm gonna resubmit um, this to my teacher. 
you submit, turn in. I'm also just going to put a, class, a private comment in here so you can see what that looks like. Uh, did. Okay. So now I've done this as a student. So now I'm going to go back to the teacher view, which is right here. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and reload this. Okay, so now as a teacher, you're probably wondering like, okay, how do I see um, my student submissions? So um, this is what I assigned. I assigned this worksheet. So I'm going to click on the worksheet. Then I'm going to, and see here, I can see, okay, this is what my student submitted. Once I click, uh, and I'm going to go back. So you know how these, there's these four different pages, classwork, people, grades. I would go to stream as a teacher. I would click the assignment that I've assigned worksheet 2.1. Once I do that, I can see all of the submissions from my classes, from my students. And I can also see this comment that my student left for me, submitted late. And I can even open this if I want to. Um, could you go through where, uh, God forbid, kids didn't submit so, several things, and you said you can send them the, showing them like what they submitted and how much is left. How did you do that? Uh, sure. Sorry. Can you repeat that? You know how you said some kids might have not submitted everything and you want to show them like, look. Okay, if I want to go zero down, just like show more. How much, how much are we talking about? Like, you have to roll everything in. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, can you just repeat your question? So if somebody had to turn uh, in, all the kids had to turn in 10 assignments, and some kids turn in like five or four, and you want to send them an email saying that, oh, you know, you didn't submit it all of them. How do you do that where they can see what they have submitted and what they have not submitted? Okay, sure. So from the student view, they'll be able to see on their classroom. Uh, I think so. Uh, yeah, um, so they'll be able to see from their classroom view. Um, mm -hmm. And they'll be, they'll be able to see all the assignments that they've submitted, all mm -hmm. the assignments that are late, and all the ones that are missed. They'll be able to see that. But let's say you want to contact them because, yes. um, you know, you're just wondering, like, why they haven't submitted something. Yes. So um, here I would click the student's name. Um, I can even respond back to the comment. They left a private comment. And I would say, no worries. Um, and then I can also email them. So I would just check mark the student's name. Okay. And then I would click email selected student. Okay. And then it would allow me to email that student. Got it. Yeah. And then it, they can see what they did and what they did. Yeah. Okay. Hey, um, sister, I have a, two questions actually. And so one question is from the teacher uh, view, can I control um, and let's say I'm using the, the Google Meet. Uh, can I control who could um, put comments in and who couldn't? Because most of the time, if, if the kids are, everybody starts writing. Can I just control that? Uh, um, that's the question. So with the Google Meet, um, it doesn't have the functionality that Zoom has, unfortunately. So um, with Google Meet, the functionality is limited. So you um, have limited function in controlling the chats. Um, unlike Zoom, where you can set it up in a way where you can mute the chat at certain times and you can completely turn it off so students don't have access to it. Um, so that's something that's not as great with Google um, Meet, which is why like um, we put the Zoom links in there. Um, because you might prefer to actually use Zoom instead of Google Meet. All right. And then the second question is, um, is there a tool uh, within the teacher's view and all that, that I could share with the students where they can annotate right on the screen um, for the classwork, so for the in-class works? So let's say I gave them um, uh, five questions and, and to answer it right during the class in certain bullet points. Could they be able to annotate it or or enter it right there with uh, where I can just quickly get the score? Um, sorry. So you're saying like um, you're the teacher in the class and during a Zoom and during the class, I, I I I give them like a question and then give them four answers and then have them select one, so that I can get the score right away. That's like so that I can make an interactive class uh, okay. and make sure that nobody's sleeping behind the screen kind of thing. Yeah. Um, 
So you can do that. Um, so if you go to classwork and you click create, you can create a question. So if you want to make it more interactive, you would, you would create a question like, what did you learn today? Question mark. Um, and then you would, um, you can assign a point value to this. You can even assign a due date and then you would click ask. So when you click ask, it would actually post it. Um, I'm just going to click ask and it will post it. And then, so now it's going to post it to all of the students. So the students on their stream, they'll be able to see like, okay, this is a question. And then they'll be able to answer the question. Does that? Right. Thank you. No problem. I have a question regarding uh, attendance. Oh, sorry, please go ahead. Uh, that's okay. You may, you can go first. Thank you. Uh, I have a question regarding attendance. Uh, the, the Excel sheet that you showed, that has one month, right? So for example, if for Sunday schools, we have only four days a month. So what do we do for the next month? Do we copy paste the first row? And then we start the next month or we keep adding it to the side because then we won't be able to get the totals of every month of if they were present late or absent. Uh, yes, that's a really good question. So um, I just um, created, we just created this sheet and we're still working on adding the correct dates um, for the sheet, but I can also show you how to just add um, columns. It's, it's, you just click insert column and it will allow you to insert more columns. Um, but we will also be um, like adjusting the sheet to make it more updated. So it's easier for you guys to like be up to date with the correct dates. Does that help? Okay. Assalamu alaikum. I have a question. I wanted to make sure I understand. So this is a, um, this is the Sunday, the Salam online, Sunday school Google Classroom, but as a as an affiliated Sunday school, we we have our own classroom. In which case, you would have to download all of these um, resources and repost them. Is that how it would work? So, um, this class board that I showed you, we've created both for um, the Salam Online um, Sunday schools and also. Um, for the collaborating Sunday school. So if you're collaborating Sunday school, your class board will look exactly like this, the one that I just showed you. Um, as a collaborating Sunday school, you can edit at the posts. Um, as a collaborating Sunday school, you would just um, edit the post, for example, a Zoom link. You would put in the Zoom link that you actually use for your collaborating Sunday school, and then you would post it so students would be able to see it. So whether um, both Salam Online Sunday schools and collaborating Sunday schools would both have to, um, the teachers would have to post the assignments to students. Does that help? Yes, that really helps. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Sister, what age range are we targeting to uh, implement this? Because I, I, like, we have four, five year olds, six year olds, and I don't think we'll be able to do anything. <laughs> you know, that's a good question. You know, I have a little, a small, cute um, uh, cousins. Um, they are, one is four and one is six. And they actually use Google Classroom for school just because, because of COVID, this has like uh, become kind of um, like a reality just using this. And obviously for little kids, um, there's a lot of parent guidance that's needed as well. So the parent will have to like facilitate, you know, like if they have a coloring, um, the parent will take a picture and upload it. So for younger kids, it will be more um, of the parent facilitating that process as well. Um, and so the grades that we are working on are um, um, kindergarten through um, seventh grade. Uh, Sister Lila, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but like so far, the grades that we have for the boards um, for these, like the setup that I showed you is um, kindergarten through seventh grade. I had a question uh, for younger kids uh, because of the situation which you just mentioned. Uh, from kinder to, I guess, second grade, I, I'm not sure. Would they be like credit, no credit, pass, fail because they're too young? Uh, for test and uh, grading? I mean, I used to do the, uh, you know, multiple choice and 
actual grading, but because of the situation right now, would they be like uh, graded strictly on, you know, you know, answering questions, doing quizzes, tests because of their situation and this COVID situation? Or do we just say, okay, they attended, they did their best and they get a credit and they pass, you know, as long as they know the concepts and stuff. Yeah, that's a really good question. And that's something that even I've thought about. Um, I um, graduated from Sydney school as well. And so I think um, when we were discussing the grading philosophy for these class boards and for Salam Online, um, there is a plug-in option where you can take all of the data from um, the class boards and um, then that data would give you a grade report, but we don't necessarily want maybe to accumulate all of that data for the students. Um, to be so strict about like the point value. So exactly. I think it'd be more up to the discretion of the teacher. You as a teacher um, okay. may want to decide how you want to grade your students. Um, you can also just use um, like a more simple grading philosophy that might be better and more fit for your students. So that's something that we kind of left up to your discretion. And would you guys have an app as well in the phones? Because for younger kids, like the teacher, the sister said before me that, uh, you know, you, you just take a picture and you submit it to the, you know, to the, uh, to the class. That's how you do it, like coloring and quizzes or whatever, drawing. So would, would you guys have a, um, apps as well that we can uh, send to the parents or? Yes, so one of the nice things about this classroom um, is that, you know, like it has a desktop version, so it can be on your computer, but it also has an app version. So um, I, um, I have it on my phone um, because my brother, uh, I check my brother's classroom okay. um, or even, <laughs> you know, like um, he has it on his iPad so he can look at it on his iPad. Okay, so, um, so we will that's be something that's nice. So we will be sending that as well to the parents saying, hey, by the way, you know, for smaller kids, please download this app uh, and, you know, you guys have easy access. Yes. So for, um, for even for all parents, like it's sometimes easier for parents to just check it on their phone. For, so um, when you're introducing it, um, you can say like there's a desktop version. There's also an app version. So um, you can download the one that you feel more comfortable with. Like Thank you can you. use the app version. Thank you so much. That makes okay. sense. Thank you. Salam I have a quick question. Welcome, Salam. Uh, I was wondering how to share the screen because I was stuck with the screen, how to share our screen to, with the students. Uh, sure. So you want to share it on Zoom? Okay. Yes. Um, so to share your screen on Zoom, what you would have to do is like um, on the bottom of your uh, Zoom bar, you know how it says like on the left corner, it says um, mute, stop video. Um, and then in the middle, there's a green button that says share screen. You would just click that green button um, oh, and once, once you do that, um, mm -hmm. there's going to be like four different tabs that come up, like desktop one, whiteboard, iPad. You don't need any of those. You just need, um, you would also need to open like a, um, open a Google Chrome tab. So just like a browser, basically. Once okay. you open the browser, you can go ahead and share your screen um, and then the students should be able to see that. Good. Thanks. That help? Yes. No problem. Uh, sister, the assignments that are in PDF, if they would be in, in, in Google Docs, would it, would it be easier for students to fill in the answers in that doc itself and then submit it back to us? Um, so the worksheets are actually part of the curriculum. So, um, the, you know, like they're already, uh, they're, they're a PDF. Um, so, um, unfortunately, just because of the limited time that we've had, you know, it's been um, already a lot of work just to get like the presentations and like all the different resources. So we didn't have time to convert anything into Google Docs. Um, but um, that's a good suggestion. So we can definitely take that into consideration. Um, so um, I, sorry. I just, just to follow up on that, so if we were to have a Google Doc, if the students were to fill it in and send it back, would it, uh, uh, would the main document also get changed or would the original one stay and then they would submit different ones? That's a very good question. And actually Google Classroom is something that has a setting specifically for that. So um, 
And let's say you want to create an assignment for your students. You would click the create button. And then when you create that assignment, you can make a copy for each student. So each, uh, each student would have their own copy of that Google document they would fill in and they would turn that in. Um, and that's something I can, I can share my screen and show you, or um, it's, it's pretty like um, simple when you're doing it, you would just click there's like an option when you're how it works uh, in general right with google docs it's just how it works in general with google docs how we make a copy in in general oh like without um like you just want to make It'd a copy the same way to make a yeah to make a copy on 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 classroom or to make a copy in general on you it would be the same way the method would be the same um so the process is actually a copy. little bit more streamlined on google classroom let me just i'll just I know we're running out of time a little bit, but I'm just going to share my screen really quickly and show you how to do that. So um, here I have, okay, um, let's see. I want to go to a coloring page, for example, right? Like um, a coloring, I would edit the assignment. Um, so once I edit the assignment, you see this button here, it says students can view file students can edit file students can make a copy uh, make a copy for each student you don't want students to edit your files because they'll be writing all over it um we have students can view file but if you prefer that you want to make a copy for each student for that google document you would click make a copy for each student and then it would make a copy for each student basically does that help yeah if we want to add so this, for example in coloring 1.1 or worksheet 1.1 has the worksheet that you're going to give anyway but if we wanted to add our own worksheet will we be able to add it uh, underneath that same 1.1 uh, yes that's correct so to add anything you would click this create button so create and if you want to um, add a worksheet, you would most likely want to create an assignment because you want to add a due date, right? And a point value. So you would create an assignment and then you would just write worksheet 2.1, for example. Um, you would add the worksheet here. So you would just add the worksheet. And then here, you would make sure under topic, you would just pick that topic. I think that was, for example, uh, let's see, it's a FIC under FIC. It's a worksheet for FIC. Then I would click that. And then I would assign the point value. Um, and then I would just click assign and it will assign to the students. So it won't come under like FIC 1.1 or FIC 1.3. Where there's you can also, also drag like all my assignments. You okay. can drag and see. Uh, after making a copy for each student, the one that you were explaining previously, uh, after making the copy, do we still need to like assign what the students can do with that copy or? No, so after making a copy, basically like the student will have access to um, that copy, like on their, you know, um, let me show you from the student view what that would look like. Um, okay, so here we have, um, from the student view, what it would look like is basically it would show up um, on the side. So here we have a worksheet. Um, and then it would show up right here. So you know how I submitted something right here? So instead of it being like something that I would have to submit, it would automatically show up for the student. So they would just click this and then they would edit it. Does that help? Thank you. No problem. Um, okay, so I think so now- For any other questions, um, inshallah, you can either send it on the WhatsApp group or um, email it into admin at salamonline.education. We can try to get back to you on that um, just because we're running short on time. Um, go ahead, Sana. Oh, I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> Thank you all. And now I'd like to introduce Sister Mona Abbas, who's um, going to talk about some teaching strategies. And she's well experienced in sen teaching Sunday school, as well as uh, teaching regular school. She's a teacher at Rise Academy. Um, so welcome, Sister Mona. Thank you so much, Sister Leila. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to speak to all of you, especially because at my heart, I am a Sunday school teacher more than a, I feel, um, 
a five day a week teacher. Um, that's where I got so much of my experiences and teaching and it was just such a joy and close to my heart. So I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, this is definitely going to be an interactive session. So if you could just be prepared. If anyone wants to turn on their camera, they're more than welcome. Anyone who's comfortable with doing that. And anytime you have a question or any feedback, if you could go ahead and share that in the chat, I'd appreciate it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. Uh, I asked for your patience today. I'm not in my usual zone. I'm using my husband's desktop. I'm far more comfortable using my own laptop, but um, Sister Senna, who was just presenting, is actually also borrowing my laptop. So a lot, I am <laughs> using this space, so if you could just bear with me. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen. Okay. Um, Oh, my apologies. I think I accidentally logged out of my slides. So if you could just give me a moment. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about classroom management as well as teaching strategies for distance learning. Now the virtual world has definitely thrown all of us for a loop um, and um, especially in a platform like teaching at an Islamic weekend school, whether it be, you know, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, um, it is um, something that required uh, a lot of creativity and quick turnaround and adjusting and accommodating for these strategies um, to make for a more engaging student um, uh, session. And a lot of us are just learning the technology ourselves. Like, how do you conduct an appropriate Zoom session? Like, how do you use all the technology? Like, Google Classroom, oh my goodness, that's a huge adjustment too, because now your students are learning, and a lot of your students actually probably understand it better than the adults do, just because they have the opportunity to use it in their um, everyday school. Um, but definitely there are, uh, there is, a lot of um, ways to use really simple strategies to improve your students' experience, as well as have a really productive Zoom session. Um, and so I hope that this helps. I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible because uh, I know that um, in the Sunday school environment, uh, we often are limited in time uh, sometimes in prep time, even in our resources. Um, so I often uh, feel like the simpler we keep things in instruction, um, the better it is, especially the strategies that work for us. So each one of us have our own personalities and what um, works for you, um, you should stick with it and reinforce it in your uh, class. Um, so hopefully, inshallah, this helps you out. So I'm going to start with um, a game that I play with my students a lot at the beginning of a Zoom session. I completely just made this up one day when I realized that my students were entering my Zoom session at uh, different times. Um, so there was always that little window of a couple of minutes where, you know, I had like students entering the session. So I said, okay, what can I do? So it's not this silence right when I start my Zoom session. So I started off with this ga uh, game that I call Guess That Sura. So I'll play a portion of any Sura. Generally, I try to look at the Suras that are being studied in for their grade in their Quran class. And I try to pick something that they're familiar with. I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I do that. So um, we're going to go ahead and play Guess That Sura. Listen to the Sura and see if you can figure it out. Share your guess in the chat window. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil all praise is due to Allah, 
Lord of the world. The entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Sovereign of the day of recompense. Alhamdulillah, excellent Sister Maryam, thank you. It is Surah Fatiha. Um, and just by doing that, I have introduced a little excitement and energy to the beginning of my Zoom session. The kids really enjoy trying to figure it out. And I try to um, make it more and more complicated. Um, sometimes I'll just pick out some ayahs right from the middle of a surah. And it's a really easy game to do to get them started. Um, so inshallah, um, a lot of what I'm going to be discussing today, I'm going to build in the strategies and have you guys practice them. So it just becomes familiar to you. Um, we're going to start off with getting to know a little bit about me. Now, when you first meet your Sunday school students, um, a lot of times we just want to jump right into the lesson. And really, it's super important to build a connection with your students first, because it can set the tone and foundation for the rest of the school year. So um, I love to start with something really simple, which is um, uh, meet your teacher, meet Sister Mona. Um, in the virtual world, how do you do this? Because in class, it was easy. Like I could have a circle time. I could talk to my students. I could share with them um, a little uh, uh, parts about me. I could maybe hold up some pictures um, from different experiences that I've had. It's a little bit different. So what I like to do is create a Google slide where I put pictures that relate to me. So I have put all these pictures that kind of relate to me. I want you to take a look at them each of these pictures represents something about me. And I want you to guess what they represent about me. What do they share? What information do they share about me? Could you go ahead and share it in the chat, please? What do you think all these pictures represent about me? Yes, yes. Um, sister, I am from Pakistan originally, and I did go to Hajj, excellent. And um, someone who knows me <laughs> guessed that I grew up in Maryland. Um, Alhamdulillah, I love to play um, football, soccer here in the US. Uh, yes, definitely. I, I am a soccer lover. My whole family is a soccer lover. They're uh, highly competitive when they play. Um, we enjoy that. And yes, I have gone for Hajj and Umrah. And I like this little picture of the teacher because I'm definitely a very much a teacher at heart. Um, so I have been teaching for over 20 years. I um, grew up in uh, Maryland. Um, my parents were both originally from Pakistan, though my father had been settled in Iraq. So I feel like we have a very um, a diverse background. Um, in Maryland, I um, really, look back fondly to my experiences of attending Sunday school at the Islamic Education Center, IEC. And then later on, um, when the Adara Jafriya was built, um, we had the opportunity of being active and really involved there. My parents still live there within five minutes distance of um, the Adara Jafriya. So it's definitely very close to my heart. I've been in the Bay Area for the last 24 years of that. I've had the opportunity um, because of my children to teach at the uh, Sabah Islamic Sunday School for about 14 years. Um, the last five years I've been at Rise Academy um, as the fourth grade teacher. I started off teaching actually a second, third combo. So I have probably seen um, every spectrum of what a classroom looks like. And I know that sometimes teaching at Sunday School um, can really, um, be an experience that is super rewarding, but also you have to really be flexible and you have to oftentimes um, really just think on the fly. Like, okay, this is not working. Let me switch activities. What, what can I do to engage my students? So this is one that I really love to use to build a connection to my students. If you're not really tech savvy and can't do the Google Slides, 
Another great way of doing it virtually is just put a couple of things about yourself that represent you. Like maybe I could have put a soccer ball here next to me and just held it up to my students. Or, you know, I could have, um, I have a little model of the Kaaba. I could have showed that to the kids. So there's ways you can do it if you're not feeling as comfortable um, with Google Slides that you can still make it engaging and interactive. And then what you can do is you can ask the students as maybe their first homework assignment, um, can you bring something that represents yourself next time to class? So there's um, a really easy strategy over my teaching philosophy. Um, I uh, think that the responsibility of a teacher, especially in a faith-based school, is uh, huge actually. Um, we're, we're not just worried about their academics. We're worried about, um, it's not that we're worried. We're, we're really trying to inspire them to have this love of their creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their holy prophet, the Allah bait. And we, um, the seeds that we plant now are gonna just grow. And these are our future leaders. So alhamdulillah, it's such a blessing. You know, I used to have parents say, oh, mashallah, sister, you're volunteering your time. And I really felt um, it was my privilege because I got closer and closer to my, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this process. So I got more, uh, uh, in some ways, sometimes I think I got more out of it than my students did because it was just part of my own journey and my own path um, in, in life as well. And so definitely you wanna create this joyful learning environment filled with positivity. Um, and it should feel like a safe sharing space too. You want all your kids um, to be active, engaged members. And the reality is, is they're coming from a lot of different backgrounds. Some may be more shy, some may be more vocal, some may appreciate hearing a topic, some may appreciate being more hands-on with a topic, some may be, um, uh, some may need more visuals, so they may need to see things more to understand it better. They're coming from a lot of different learning styles. Um, as well as a diversity of background. I mean, you have some um, children, this is their only exposure to an Islamic environment sometimes. And on the other spectrum, the, it's really reinforced. Like it's within the home, it's within the extended family. They may be going to a faith-based school. So it's, it's such a diverse background. So you're really trying to accommodate um, different um, learning styles and that diversity. Um, also, it's really possible in a virtual world to incorporate hands-on collaborative and project-based learning. And I'll talk about that as we go along. And um, if uh, you guys can just help me keep track of time with Sister Layla or Sister Sana, if you could do that. Um, so let's start with classroom management. Um, the best thing, <laughs> about that first session that you have with your students is not only do you get to know them, but you're really setting the groundwork for the coming um, year. And so if you do this well, you lay the foundation. I think of it as like building a house. So if you have a really strong foundation, the rest of the year, the students actually um, have a really productive year and you're not frazzled and like, oh my gosh, where are they not listening to me? What's going on? So laying the foundation starts with building a connection to your students. So it may start with a simple get to know you game or playing icebreakers. Students love games and they don't have to be really in intensive. And I'll talk, uh, we'll talk a little bit later about some games that we can play in our sessions. Make sure you connect with your students before you correct them. So I think oftentimes we um, start seeing that someone's getting fidgety, they're doing something they're not supposed to do in their Zoom session, and we're like, oh, Ali, can you please not do that? But before, maybe Ali did something really awesome, like he did a really great job on reading that passage. And we wanna make sure we reinforce what they do well. So say, mashallah, Ali, you did an amazing job reading um, chapter one. And so when we give that reinforcement to our students, um, they start developing more and more of a connection to them. And also sharing a little bit of ourselves. So when I do that meet Sister Muna and I talk a little bit about myself and I give, give 
an opportunity for the kids to get to know me and me to get to know them, it helps with overall classroom management. But you can't be a pushover. So you can teach with kindness, but you can still have structure and routine. And what I like to call teaching with kindness and firmness. Um, so how does that really work? Um, I would say that it starts with building um, a tone in your classroom. So I wanted you guys to do a think and share. Now in the classroom, I used to call this think, pair, share, but in the virtual world, we have to adjust because you can't really talk to a partner and discuss this. So I want you to think and reflect on this question and then be ready to share your answers. And it's okay if you wanna just go ahead and um, call out, I don't mind. Um, so what impact can effective, positive classroom management have on a child? If you want to share it with me in the chat, or if you want to just go ahead and call out an answer, I appreciate that. I like the interaction when people are responding back to me. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. This is Sister Laura from Michigan. Um, so to answer your question, it can have a great effect, um, and the child will be more interested to learn, will feel more self-confident, will love his dean. So positive classroom management is so important. That's like half the, half the task. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much, Sister Laura. Shout out to Michigan. I have some family in Michigan. So I appreciate that. Definitely, it does improve learning. And I see a lot of... Um, uh, of our uh, friends in the chat section also did that. Thank you. Yes, Sister Aruj. They are willing to learn. Um, they thrive actually in this in, uh, in this environment and your results are so much better. Um, it helps children feel a connection and sense of belonging in the classroom. Um, it's just very respectful. So that's the firm part, but it's encouraging at the same time. Um, it's definitely got the most effective long-term results. Remember, we're trying to build these lifelong learners with a deep love of, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Holy Prophet, the Alul Bayt. So it helps them thrive in the long term. And we're basically modeling a flock to them. So we're teaching these important social and life skills. How do they problem solve? How do they show respect to each other, empathy? How do we cooperate? So a lot of the things of our dean, uh, we students learn more from when we model it to them than when we just explain it to them. Alhamdulillah. So we're going to go ahead and um, start with changing our internal language. Change the way you see your student. So sometimes you're in um, the classroom. And now you'll be in the virtual classroom and you may see your students and you're like, oh, he's, he's definitely going to be my troublemaker. Oh my gosh, that one's, he's too noisy. Oh my goodness. She's just, she's just so stubborn. But when we start using those words for our students, we kind of start developing this um, negative mindset that then informs how we interact with them. But if we start changing that language, now that troublemaker, he's super curious, okay? He's, he just seems like he's really inquisitive. He's got a lot of questions. He just needs a structure to know how to ask them. Or that child who seems kind of really disrespectful, but he's just a blurter by nature. He just is outspoken. He wants to ask questions and he just doesn't have that ability to just go ahead and um, hit the pause button. He just has to get out his idea. Or the one who's boastful, like, you know, um, she's just like, well, I'm the best. I'm the smartest one in the class. Well, maybe they're just super confident, you know, and they just want to share that. The bossy one has great leadership skills. So if we think of them not as bossy, but as a leader, the same thing. Your hyperactive student is energetic and your stubborn is persistent. So now once we've changed to kind of this green column here, we are looking at our student in a more positive light. And I think that informs how we interact with them as well. Do I have any questions so far? You are always welcome to share any questions you have. Um, Assalamu alaikum, I'm Shazia from Columbus. And uh, 
<laughs> Thank you. And I was just expecting like uh, uh, maybe later, would you be uh, more specific for your recommendation based on the grade levels or age specific, like for example, I mean, maybe you, you, you may defer this answer right till the end because like how, how we are going to connect with a kindergartner would be definitely be different definitely. than how we're connecting definitely. with the teachers. Yeah, definitely the strategies that you're gonna use for like a K through two versus a three through five are gonna be different, but some of them can overlap and you can just mm -hmm. um, extend the idea. So it's kind of um, like what we do in the classroom where I have some students who are great readers and some who are not, right? So um, when it comes to their writing, sometimes it's the same thing. Like some are really uh, great writers and some need more assistance like where I put like a sentence starter or a sentence frame where they have to fill in the blank. So definitely as I get through to um, teaching strategies, I can tell you what, how you can adapt them for the grade level you're teaching. Right. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Oh, no problem. My pleasure. Um, so, Balikam Salam. Uh, I'm sure you had to discipline some students at one point in your life. And uh, what's the best discipline approach you use with students? You know, um, I, I was just going to actually show you some slides that um, talk about that. So how about I go ahead and do that? And then if you have any further questions, we can come back to it after. Sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you, brother. Um, all right. So teaching classroom procedures. I think that kids do so well when you have given them the framework and they know what to expect. So for me, for instance, when I started teaching this year, I started right off with just reinforcing um, what my classroom procedures were. I, we used Zoom. So I had some basic rules for Zoom um, that I shared with um, my students and I reinforce it each time because we can't expect that the kids are gonna get it in just one session. Um, inshallah, I know that um, Alkissa is going to give you actually routines and procedures that you can use that are particular to a Sunday school platform. But for me right now, like just reemphasizing to the kids to be on time and turning their video camera on and being on mute when they enter the session, because sometimes they've got um, their cameras turned off and it's very hard to engage with your students when you can't see them. Um, the same thing when they're um, coming in and they're not on mute, then all of a sudden you hear all the background noise because obviously no, um, a lot of our students are um, surrounded by family and things that are going on at home. Um, I also encourage them to be kind of in a distraction-free zone. Um, using nonverbal cues or icons. So there's a lot of icons on Zoom, like the hand, raise hand, that really helps um, uh, if they've got a question. So then you can call on them. Or if they just physically raise their hand, then I, I know to call on them. Some of my students, you know, the younger ones especially, they need to go to the bathroom and they ask, even in a virtual classroom. They don't just get up and go a lot of the times. So like, uh, they, I would ask them, just share it with me in chat or give me a little signal. And then, then I would go ahead and let them know that they may go for a moment. But set down whatever your ground rules are. Um, especially for the chat box. If you are going to use a chat box, you want to make sure you emphasize to them that all comments there are appropriate and thoughtful. And I generally make all my comments directed just to me. Um, sometimes I open it up to everyone. You have this ability to go to host only. And that generally is better because sometimes some of our kids um, are not making as good choices. So you want to filter their comments a little bit and having all their class materials and bringing a positive and engaged learning attitude. So those are my like basics. I kind of show it as a slide right at the beginning of my session so that kids can just remember um, how, um, what our classroom rules are because you have this gap in Sunday school of like five or six days before they see you again. So they need those reminders. The next thing I do is I make sure I have a consistent classroom routine. I come up with a classroom routine and I stick to it. So in my years of Sunday school, my kids knew exactly what to expect every Sunday. I had just a general outline on the board uh, for them. Like, so if you're in your Zoom zone and you have a space, you could stick a big post-it note, you can go ahead and do that with your schedule. 
or if you just want to create a slide, or if you want to use something as simplistic as just a dry erase board, I really encourage you all to have one and make sure your students have one too. It's a really quick and easy way for them to interact with you uh, besides using the Zoom um, chat feature. So knowing what to expect for the day. A lot of times their questions are like, well, teacher, what are we doing next? But teacher, what are we doing next? So if they know what to expect, that I'm gonna have morning meeting at this time, we're gonna have circle time at this time, we always have history, and then we'll have a break, then we'll have a clock, then we have our exit ticket, then we go to Salah assembly. So there's, um, there's a lot of the questions that our students have disappear when they have, they know their procedures and they know the structure of the class. And it really mitigates a lot of those behavioral challenges you may see. So positive discipline. Um, this is very much the Therbia approach and I, um, I'm, I'm not as qualified as some of our scholars here um, to, uh, to speak about, to that, but definitely I have um, used it within my classroom and I use strategies like positive reinforcement. A lot of times we forget to acknowledge our students when they're doing things well. But if we start focusing just on when they do something well, even if it's your most challenging child, if you just pick out a couple times things that they do really well and say, mashallah, Zara, I am so, um, uh, uh, I really appreciate um, the great work you did on um, this project you did about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I love how you used your colors here. Be really specific. Um, try to stay away from things. Oh, mashallah, you're so smart. Oh, mashallah, you did great. It's a little bit too, um, it's too broad for them. If you go to something more specific that they've done, then they're like, oh, wow, Masha, I did a really great job on this. And they want to they wanna get that positive feedback more and more. Um, redirection. This is a good one. So instead of saying, stop it, you could say, uh, you know, like say, uh, Zainab is swirling in her chair like this around and around in circles and it's getting super distracting, okay? Instead of saying, sit up, stop moving your chair. What you could say, um, Zina, what could you do differently with your chair? And then it makes her think, okay, what could I do differently? What am I doing wrong? Oh, maybe I'm swirling in my chair and that's distracting. Because if we constantly tell them what to do, they'll never learn to figure it out for themselves and regulate. So when you give them the opportunity to be an active member of um, part of that equation of fixing their behavior, they really do learn. And sometimes it just really requires redirecting them in another direction. Like say they're really frustrated about something and you're like, okay, how about we take a break from this? And you pull out a fast finisher activity. Do you have your um, Hakim and Hadi uh, book? Why don't you read that for a few moments? Or, you know, if they're feeling really super frustrated, I like to use cool down techniques. Um, it's a little harder in virtual world, but you can go, you, there's a lot of things that kids can do to take like a mental break. Like you can ask them, why don't you go make your wudu and come back? or why don't you recite a dua? Just having that mental break sometimes can help them like regulate if they're feeling frustrated by something. All right, um, and providing them options. It sounds something so simplistic, but it makes such a big difference. Um, for instance, I'm doing a lesson on history and I say to my students, would you like to do page five or page six first? Just having that choice and maybe bringing it to a boat engages all the kids and they get really excited like, okay, I get to determine what I would like to work on first. And it definitely helps with the behavior. And the last thing is just acknowledge their feelings. When they feel like they're being heard, um, just even saying, I understand that that is um, upsetting you. How can I help you? That goes a long way to reinforcing and building that connection with your student but also making them feel like they've been heard. And our tone matters. So if they hear like frustration in our tone or annoyance in our tone, 
it kind of it kind of also just develops this like cycle of frustration amongst everyone but if we keep our tone like really level and very calm then they feel a little bit more nurtured so i hope those strategies help you with classroom management i know there's a lot more strategies out there but i just felt like let's stick to some of the things that you can use in this setting all right does anyone have any questions okay so let's take a brain break i love to do these in my class because remember when we're in the virtual world um there's not a lot of movement for our students so we have to build it in um sometimes it can be as simple as do, uh, getting up and doing some stretches um uh another thing you could do is i did i do this game um it's a play on simon says i call it ali says and i'm like ali says put your hands on your head ali says put your hands on your shoulders put your hands on your head uh oh and then i kind of um say oh but ali didn't say that so just having those brain breaks uh really work so i would love for everybody to take one right now can everyone go ahead and stand up and just stretch a little bit for a moment i know that just by taking like a one minute brain break makes a big difference in how you um feel like recharged and refreshed for the rest of the session and there's a lot of things out there that you can do but they can be really simplistic you can exercise with the kids you can ask them to do it independently you can play a game of ali says you can ask them to do a yoga pose how long can they hold that pose? There's so many ways that you can make it fun. So, I hope everybody enjoyed the brain break. And now we'll get back to our session. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our teaching strategies. And before I do that, I'm just gonna take a peek at the chat. Every so often, take a look at the chat so that you see what's going on in your students. It's real a window into if they've got questions. Um, so um, Sister Laura said, will these slides be shared with us? I believe so. Uh, I defer to um, Sister Layla on that one. So. Uh, yes, inshallah, if Sister Muna can share these slides and we can pass it forward. And um, we will also be sharing the recording of the entire session with everyone. And um, I'm just going to keep track of my time. So teaching strategies. Um, so now let's talk about what your virtual Zoom session will look like and how can you engage your student, the students further. Um, so Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, al Qisa Foundation has done so much of this prep work for you. I remember when I first started teaching Sunday school, um, uh, with my very good friend, Sister Aruj and Sister Santa, <laughs> we had like material that I think Sister Aruj and Sister Sabina had like created and pulled from here or there. And we were just, we really didn't have the basis for all this material. And now, mashallah, you guys have storybooks, you have slides, you have uh, like games. It's amazing, mashallah, the, um, the amount of resources that you have to pull from. So, um, I want to talk about the first um, strategy, um, and that is a stop and jot. So I would love for everybody to do this. So if you could get out a pen and a piece of paper, pen or pencil and piece of paper, and if you could, and I love to do this with my students because I want to make sure they're participating. So a lot of times I say, can you show me your supplies? Show me. And they'll hold up their notebook and their pencil. And that way, I kind of see, okay, they've got their supplies, but they feel like they're engaged in the class. So we're going to do a stop and jot. I want you to reflect on this hadith. Whenever you make a mistake, accept and correct it. Imam Ali alayhi salam. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set a timer for two minutes. And I want you to jot down um, your answer to this question. What are mistakes? Have you ever made a mistake? What have you done once you realize your mistake? 
So I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer and I would love for all of you to do this stop and jot. All right, that's an example of a really easy way you can um, do this strategy. Um, I know that some of my friends are probably annotating my screen. <laughs> so that is a feature that you're going to see some of your students use and you can turn it off in um, your Zoom settings. So um, basically, I, um, what I really love about embedding these timers into my slides is I think it's really good opportunity for kids to take that amount of time to reflect because sometimes they're like, I'm done teacher, I'm done, I'm done. But really what you want them to do is take the time to really reflect on your question because a lot of times they just kind of zip through the activity. Um, so I got a lot of my friends give me responses here in the chat. Um, and um, so um, something, uh, Sister Umbreen said something wrong on which you repent. Um, so Shaz, yeah, adding salt to my teacup instead of sugar, made a fresh cup of tea again with sugar, reacting when a student uh, misbehaves. If anyone else wants to share what they think um, mistakes are and... Um, uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Yeah, I ahead. would like to add. Sure. Uh, uh, definitely, we all do uh, and make mistakes, uh, and uh, there are different types of mistakes and different responses uh, to uh, those mistakes. Once we are in relationship, for example, uh, with our brother, sisters, mother, father, so there is a different way uh, to correct it. Sometimes, as a teacher, we are doing maybe we we taught something yesterday or last week something which was not correct. So do not we should not feel ashamed of correcting it in front of students and telling them this was like that, but the actual thing is like that. So uh, to different mistakes, different responses, and we all are doing it uh, often. Very often we are doing uh, uh, all these things. And it is uh, a very, uh, as uh, Imam Ali has said, then there is no other word to define it by ourselves that what to do. We should accept it and we should correct it. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much, brother. Really well said. Uh, the reason I use this one is because mistakes are definitely an opportunity for our students to uh, learn and grow. Um, and um, I think we've been, we so often are um, socialized to believe that mistakes are a sign of failure in some way. Um, but 
we have to create a space for our students to um, learn and grow from their mistakes. And it's so interesting because now um, with social emotional learning curriculum being um, so on trend, um, so you have uh, you know phrases like mistakes are opportunities to learn and grow, but uh, subhanAllah, this has been the foundation of our faith, as you can see from Hadith, that um, when people make a mistake, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always gives the opportunity for forgiveness. So when we are acknowledging when we make a mistake, and we're going to make a lot during virtual learning, um, the kids can see, okay, uh, a sister when I made a mistake, she um, like didn't unmute herself and I couldn't hear half of her uh, talk. It's gonna happen, You're gonna, we're gonna make mistakes. And if we um, provide an environment where kids realize, okay, um, they don't have to be fearful of making a mistake, um, it's a safe space. And then we can guide them in the right direction. Uh, so as long as they don't you know, repeat that, they make that mistake, they accept it, they correct it, alhamdulillah. But I hope you also understand that the stop and jot is a really um, great way to check for understanding. So if you've done like, you know, um, a reading passage and you're, you wanna just check um, the understanding of your students, this is a really easy and simple strategy to do it with. Um, can, can I add one more? Trick? Sure. Okay, uh, it's, it's important for a teacher to realize that uh, you should not be shy or ashamed of it. But at the same time, in the beginning, we need to realize kids also mm -hmm. that teachers can, may do some mistakes. You know, uh, even in the older kids I, I've seen at the university level, in the evaluation, they will write very first day mistake. Oh, she did that. So they don't realize that mistakes, they are a process in a learning environment. So they take uh, their teachers as, you know, role model and ideal that they cannot do any mistake. So uh, just to give uh, these things uh, really will help for them to uh, have a better mannerism also. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, sister. So well said. And I, and I think that's really reinforced by this great comment here that not only do we as teachers make mistakes, sometimes we make big blunders too. We just, <laughs> we're human and we're learning. So um, a lot of times when I do that too, as well as uh, sister who posted this comment, um, we, we can model that behavior um, just by apologizing and saying, we're gonna make our best effort to try not to do it again. The kids oftentimes learn a lot by our action and how we've modeled it to them and just by explaining it to them. Oh, alhamdulillah. So let's um, go ahead. Oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Sister Mona. Um, so I was just gonna add that mistakes are, you know, in unintentional. So if it happens in the classroom, I think as a teacher, one should not get so serious and, uh, you know, be calm about it, acknowledge it, accept it. And uh, I think that's how you, you can just move on. Allow them to make mistakes too. Uh, that's my... Definitely. Thank you so much, Sister Zanab. And for those of you who don't know, Sister Zanab is actually um, um, uh, a tried and true Sunday school teacher. She's been teaching at Saba uh, Center for many, many years, alhamdulillah. Um, so definitely great advice. Now the next um, strategy that I'm going to teach you is probably one of my favorites, and it's the easiest way to build in movement in the classroom. So you're teaching, 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 and then all of a sudden you see your kids are kind of drooping and they're like going like this. And then all of a sudden you say, let's have a scavenger hunt. So right now we're going to have a little scavenger hunt. Okay. And I, I'm going to give you your first clue and I want you to go and find that item and bring it back. Um, and for those of you who are comfortable uh, turning on your camera, you can and just hold it up. For those of you who are not, that's okay. It's all right. Um, so our first clue is find something that you prey on. Find something that you prey on. And I will give you 30 seconds to go find it. Your time starts now. Was I the first one, Miss Mona? <laughs> I, think, I think it's a, a close tie.
time between you, Sister Rouge, and Sister Shazia. <laughs> like that, that, um, uh, uh, Janavaz is like literally an arm sister. <laughs> When I played this with my students, literally one of my students had it sitting right next to them. I was like, mashallah. <laughs> mashallah. Oh, very good. Excellent. I see a lot of janamazes. Um, some of my students brought, you know, such guys brought turbas. It was fabulous. Some brought tuskies. It was just like so fun. And they were so excited to go like quickly around the house. So a scavenger hunt is a great way to engage them in the virtual world. I did one um, during the month of Ramadan, and these were some of the clues I gave them. Um, and, and give them the opportunity to share what they brought because they're super excited by what they come up with. Um, I remember one time um, I asked them, <laughs> find something that makes you happy. And one of my students brought his mom. So I thought it was super cute, mashallah. That, you know, that's a la that that's, you know, what made him happy. And then the other day when I played this with my students, I said, find something that makes noise. And one of my little students, she brought her brother. <laughs> She's like, he makes noise. <laughs> so it's a real great way for them to have fun, build in some movement into the session, but also kind of get to know your students. So some of the clues that I have for the Ramadan scavenger hunt were find something you pray on, recite a surah from the Holy Quran, find something we eat when we break our fast, find the container where you put money for those in need, your sadqa box. Um, so these, this is a real simple thing that can be adapted for a lot of different lessons, or it can just be kind of like random. Um, you could do something uh, connected to akhlaq, uh, where you talk about gratitude, and you could do like a gratitude scavenger hunt. So it's a really easy one to adapt um, and very quick to do on the fly. So if you um, have a, a little extra time and you can't figure out what to do with your students, a scavenger hunt is a quick and easy way to just engage your students, inshallah. Oh, okay, you found your turba and the rock that belongs to indigenous people in this country. So I picked up this rock while walking along a trail in a local park. It has its own history and story. Mashallah, see the amount of conversation that I just got just from asking my students to bring an item that they pray on. So Alhamdulillah. Um, I had a question. Your teachers, uh, so uh, this um, teacher asked me, do we have to create our own slides or will it be shared with us so we don't have to create it? So uh, a lot of these slides I have created myself, but you don't have to create a slide. You can use something as simple as your dry erase board, or you could write it down in chat. A lot of these things can just be whatever is your comfort level. So I hope that answered that question. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, about I this have a question. Sure, go ahead. I had a question. Uh, sometimes we run out of uh, things, right? Islamic stuff. Right. Uh, could we uh, uh, say like a, um, for sca scavenger hunt, like what's your favorite stuff animal or why do you like it? Or I know it's not Islamic, but sometimes you run out of Islamic things. So I didn't know if we could do that just to, uh, you know, mix it up a little. Of course, sister. And you know what? It's just about the lens and how you like discuss it with your student, like, you know, you can say, can you bring your favorite stuffed animal? Okay, um, how do you care for your stuffed animal? And think about it in a clock terms, you know, how, okay. uh, so you can always, I, I feel like a lot of times we think that Islamic studies is just one period of 40 minutes or two periods of 40 minutes, but it's the whole life. So we wanna try to help them see through that lens. So even like, everyday objects like, you know, their supplies, having them bring like their markers. Well, how would we care for this? You know, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to uh, waste or does he want us to take care of our supplies? So it's just kind of putting it in that framework for them. I hope that helps. Yeah, I, that, that's what I was thinking, like bring it back to the religion, but with the day-to-day -day things, because you don't want to put the religion in a box and close it for two hours, like open it up for three hours and then close it back in and just go about your regular day. And that happens a lot. Right. Yeah. I, I no, the, appreciate that. Can I add point? 
Sure, go ahead. So the religion of Islam is closer to our life, is the nature. nature. So we can discuss about the, everything in the natural way, so they can love the things. So, okay, our Islam is closer to humanity. Everything is closer to our lives. So in that way, they can respect the things that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us and the Holy Quran is ex asking us to do that. Thanks. Oh, Thank you so much. Exactly. Shout out to my um, <laughs> uh, <Saba. laughs> School of Alabi uh, teachers. I love you all, mashallah. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, another comment that I really liked is that um, this teacher said that, you know, we can say to them, we want to be thankful and appreciative for all the things that we have. You know, Allah made these toys for us. Um, so inshallah, um, we'll go on to our next strategy, um, virtual field trips. You can't take the kids out of the virtual world, but you can bring things to them. Okay. So there's a lot of great options. This is one that a friend of mine sent me really recently, which I thought was a fabulous idea. Um, our kids, you know, are limited in their travel right now. And there's, um, a lot of uh, things that we can still expose them to. So this one was um, a virtual field trip to a Zarat um, in Iran. So you can actually use sites like this and you know, kind of discuss these different places mm. with the students. Um, and so you see now the kids are here at Imam Reza's shrine. So you can really build in um, virtual field trips into your session. There's a lot of resources out there on Google. Um, and, you know, when you're part of a larger teaching community, Alhamdulillah, you know, Al-Qasa will be sharing a lot of resources with you, but definitely there are um, a lot of things that you can do to like engage students. They love virtual field trips. It has been such a big, um, point of interest. Sometimes in my class, in my virtual class, they bring all their siblings too. They're like, Sister Mona, can my brother and sister come and watch too? And I'm like, sure, bring them along. And then, you know, we're all going on a field trip together and it just sparks this uh, curiosity in them, uh, alhamdulillah. So yes, yes, definitely brother. I was one of the slow learners. I'm very technologically incompetent and I depend on my child. He, uh, Brother Saladin was saying, some of us may not know how to upload these beautiful pictures using Zoom. I actually just went to the link. And um, it's, what I did was, is I just shared my screen and I had um, that um, on my, you know, on my um, screen and I just clicked on it. I just clicked on the link and then all of a sudden we're there. So there's a lot of easy ways to do that. Um, and then if you feel like it's hard for you to do it in the moment, you can also create like a Google slide with pictures. But I think what I like about virtual field trips is that the kids um, get more movement. So it's not just showing them a photograph. A lot of those virtual field trips are actually like short little video clips. Use them. Like um, as long as they're like appropriate to your class, do always watch any video in advance before you show your students because unfortunately sometimes there's some imagery and things that are not appropriate um but definitely um there's a lot of um resources out there um that can be a little more engaging than the, just showing them a photograph but if that doesn't work for you like if you can't get to it and during your zoom session you can always send the link later to parents and they can look mm -hmm. at it with their children mm -hmm. okay. um, right. i had a quick question sure. uh, uh, for example um in their regular class i noticed that the teachers would take break because now the they're sitting there from eight till two which is ridiculous right. uh, but they do give them breaks a lot and they give them some uh, you know, they put a YouTube called uh, Yeti and they show a little monster, mm -hmm. you know, taking breaths and rabbit breaths or deep breaths mm -hmm. and calming them down and teaching them how to concentrate. Could we use that as well in Sunday school or no? Well, you know what I like to do, because I think we have to be mindful of some of the imagery that's out there. Like I like Cosmic Kids Yoga, but sometimes 
like the way that their dress is not so appropriate, right? Exactly. And so you have to be really mindful. So I become, I become the yoga master in that moment and I do it with them. I think it's the easiest way until we have more of those resources that um, are just more appropriate for kids. So if you want to do a mindfulness activity with your kids, you could put on a nature scene, just like a picture of the woods and have like the sound of um, rainwater in the background. Yeah, the, ba the background. Yeah, yeah, and just give them a moment to um, like turn around and not look at the screen and just kind of say, close your eyes. And I want you to think that you're in the forest. Um, mashallah, this is such a beautiful creation and of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just kind of describe that location to them. Okay and then ask them to do some deep breathing. So those are really easy ways that um, you can um, do some of those breaks without necessarily using video content that might not be super appropriate in this setting. Okay. Sister, what's a, what's a typical or ideal uh, session length for especially younger kids? Is an hour too much? Is it half an hour too much? Um, so for our K through two, right now we've had two blocks of an hour each. Um, and for three through five, I've been doing, and this of course is regular school, five days a week. I've been doing three blocks of a little more than an hour each. Um, what I do is I build in breaks. So after about 40 minutes, I build in a break for my grades K through three through five. Sometimes it's just socializing. They're missing their friends. So if you just make it like a social time where they can just talk to each other, you can monitor the conversation a little bit, but just let them have conversation with each other or ask them to bring a snack and they can all share a snack at the same time together. Um, so a lot of times what you can do is just build in those smaller breaks but I like to go with what's going on in the classroom too, because I think every classroom has its own culture and dynamic. So if you feel like your kids are really just kind of dragging, that's a great time to say, okay, let's go ahead and take a, uh, you know, a five minute stretch break. Um, let's go ahead and take a 10, um, 10 minute, like away from our screen break. And I want you to pick up a fast finisher activity. So I want you to read this story about Imam Ali alayhi salam and just go ahead and take a break from looking at the screen. So those, I hope that helps. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. We Thank do you, have sister. about um, around five minutes left. So okay. just... Thank you. I just I think I've got just one more strategy. All right, so one thing that I love that is super engaging in class is student-led presentations through their project work, okay? This is an example of a project, and it was a really on-the-fly project. Like, literally, we were just talking about it at morning assembly, and then our head of school said, well, why don't you just make a masjid and bring it with you next weekend, next week? And then all of a sudden we got these beautiful questions and we were like amazed at the work that the kids did because something about it just engaged them. And a lot of them were like, okay, we're building mushrooms. And they would talk about it with me. And they're like, I got this cardboard and I got this craft paper. And, and as you can see, a lot of them went into detail. Like this student, she actually um, chose a mushroom in Afghanistan, the uh, country where her family's from. And she really, actually did such a beautiful job. She included all her family. She loved presenting about it. It kind of shared a little bit about her. And in the process, she learned about this masjid. Um, I also want to share a video that one of my students um, made, just a really quick video. Um, and I'll just share a part of it. And you can see that he was so proud of his masjid. He made, it, he made a video about it and um, just to present it to the class. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad Ali Khan. And as you know, last week it was Imam Ali Khan. So, in the same way to that, I did my mashallah. I did my mashallah. I did my And he sent it to me upside down. But it's okay. It works. You know, and the kids loved it. And some of them just bring their project and they share it with you. And it doesn't have to be an intense project. It could be that they're all working on a poster and you ask them one by one to share it. 
And they love talking about their work. And the other kids in the class, you'll be so surprised. I think they just want a break from their teacher. They love hearing each other present. It's so engaging um, and definitely a great way to connect. So the last but not least, of course, all the amazing Alkisa Foundation resources that you have, the training videos and the materials that they're going to provide. Um, it is um, a wealth of resources that I know 14, uh, more than 14 years ago, I definitely didn't have and I really appreciate that they're there. So Alhamdulillah, I hope that this session was informative and helpful. I know there were some questions in the chat. Um, if I'm not able to get to them because of time, if you could just share them and I'll do my best. Um, you can also just email me directly. Oops, I forgot one strategy, I'm so sorry. Hold on, let me just go ahead and give you the strategy because it's, it's an easy one to do. At the end of a session, um, uh, it's called an exit ticket. So I would like all of you to do this exit ticket if you have the time. So before we end our session, I would like you to share, um, you can jot this down, three things you learned, two things you found interesting, and one question you still have. And because we're at 1047, I don't know if we'll have the opportunity to share this, but this is a really great way to check for your students' understanding. Sometimes you can put this on the Google Classroom. Sometimes you can ask them to share it in chat. Sometimes you can just ask them to hold it up to you, but it's a really easy way to share their um, under, understand where what they've learned and it engages them in a way and then you can take those questions and you can use that as a jumping off point to your next session with them thank you so much for your time if you have any questions you're more than welcome to email me directly at mona.abbas at riseacademy.education thank you so much to alkissa um it's just been such an honor and I really appreciate uh, getting to interact with all of you for the last hour. A salawat. Thank you so much, Sister Muna. I think I can speak for everyone when I say this was super helpful. And also on behalf of the entire content team, we loved your um, suggestions, even the stop and jot and the um, exit ticket, we've incorporated that into all of the slides we've created. So thank you for that. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. And inshallah, um, do definitely reach out if you have any questions. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Um, and uh, for everyone, we'll take a, about a five minute coffee break, um, just like to refresh ourselves and then we'll get, we'll continue um, with the next two presentations, which I will lead on Zoom and uh, teaching guidelines. So uh, we'll be back at 11.05 uh, PST, so five minutes. If you do need to take a Salah break, go for it um, because we have so many different time zones. We weren't able to um, add that in here. Um, if you need to, this will all be recorded. So um, feel free to come in and out, inshallah. Sorry, we'll be back at 10.55, not 11.05, uh, five minutes. So we'll be back um, in five minutes, inshallah.
All right. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Leila. I will be going over the Zoom training and teacher guidelines. Um, thank you, everyone, for your attendance so far. We've, as you can see in the agenda, we've covered about half of our um, orientation so far. And I see that there are still a few people that haven't come. So just give like one more minute and then I'll begin. Assalamualaikum sister. Well, can, do you have like a monthly person that we can hire to help us complete the setup for our school? So um, we have a, a makeshift IT team. These are our um, volunteers who have been helping set up. Um, so we will, um, I believe we'll be talking with your point person, the person that has signed up to be um, in liaison with uh, Salam Online, the one that you filled out the form with. Um, we'll be sharing everything with them, sharing all the videos that we have, all of that, and then we'll be available for questions. But uh, as far as set up, we'll try our best, but we do have uh, limited resources. Um, I will talk a little bit about what to do when, um, when you have, um, sorry, when you're having, running into some issues, like how to troubleshoot it, who to talk to, I will uh, cover that a little bit. It's just, it'll be like either the network in the WhatsApp group that we've created. If you're on that, you can send a message and talk to the other schools to see what they've done or um, message us. And I believe we have either uh, the admin email or it'll be another email, but I'll get back to you on that. Okay, so I'll begin. So uh, for Salam Online, we'll be using Zoom for our live classes every Sunday, except for holidays. So um, as you can see for Google Classroom, that's where all the assignments will be held, but the live classes that have, will happen every week will be on Zoom. Um, this may change from school to school, but for Salam Online, we'll be using Zoom. So I'll just share um, a little bit about the platform. First, um, we'll be creating uh, Zoom accounts through Google. And the way you do it is you'll, um, so we'll give you the login information and you'll use this uh, sign in with Google. Can you, um, you'll see this little button here, you click it, you put in your Google information and then you'll be logged in. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, um, but that's like the easiest way to go forward with that. And then uh, for Salam Online, we will be creating your meetings as reoccurring meetings, but just in case you need to do it as well. Um, and for others, it, the way you schedule a meeting is you click this button here. When, you're, when you log in, you'll get the screen and you click schedule and this will pop up. So then you write your topic like um, KG Sunday school class, and then the start, the date, the time, the duration. Um, and then you want to put a meeting password. So you click the require meeting password and we usually just say salam or you know something easy so that if someone's logging in, they can quickly click, um, press, uh, put in that password. And then um, okay, mama. typically you want to, so for salam online, we're asking everyone to keep the videos off uh, when you enter and then you can turn it on, cameras will be required to be turned on. And then uh, make sure your audio settings right. Um, you don't have to worry about, Google. well, you can do it about Google Calendar where you just schedule it. So that's just to schedule the meeting into your calendar. And then you click advanced options and then you get these options. Yes to enable waiting room, you click that so it's blue. Um, you could do mute participants on entry will require that. And then um, we are asking you to record the 
um, meeting, but I believe we're going to ask you to record on the cloud, not on the computer. That way it's easy to share it. But um, these two for sure, mute participants on entry and enable waiting room. This is um, just for security and safety and then mute participants because sometimes we don't realize we're on unmute and we're like talking. So it's better to just um, have everyone muted. And then uh, here's a little bit about video etiquette. Um, for backgrounds, make sure your background is like a clear area where you don't have anything distracting. You wanna be in a quiet place. Um, if you do not have like a, some kind of white background where it's like bright, then you can always put on a Zoom background. Um, those are pretty interesting where you just go to your video settings and then you could add a virtual background, but make sure that this is um, appropriate for Sunday school and so on. Oh, sorry. Okay, and then make sure you have your headphones on so that no outside voice comes in and your voice is clear and you can hear clearly. Headphones are always a good idea when you're on a video conference. And then your environment, you wanna have a quiet environment where you don't have a lot of distractions or, yeah. And so these are your etiquette. And then also just, um, I'll go over some guidelines as well, but you know, it's, it's basically a classroom, you wanna, treat the virtual classroom as if it's a regular classroom. Dress appropriately, come dressed as if you're teaching Sunday school, um, interact with your students as if they're your students. It's, it's nothing different than what it normally would be as, um, as, an, as Sunday school. Um, so this is a cool feature where you uh, can control mute as a host, um, and you can see down here, it's mute all or unmute all. Uh, sometimes students will forget, or if they're younger and there's no one to help them, they'll their um, voice will be on, you wanna mute it. Um, you could also go individually and click the little mic button uh, to mute and, or stop video as a host. If you are seeing anything inappropriate or whatever, you could just uh, stop the video. Um, Okay, and now I'll just go over a few features. So for Zoom, um, you have the feature to share your screen. When you click share screen at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a green button that says share screen. It'll come up over here. So all the different, uh, all the different um, windows that are open, like for example, if your presentation is on this one, you'll click this one. If you're sharing a video, make sure you're clicking share computer sound, otherwise the uh, the video uh, sound won't come. And then um, at the same, in the same uh, screen, if you click share screen, you can also do a whiteboard feature where you can write as if it's a whiteboard. I can share that actually right now. So, I don't know if you guys can see this. Or maybe not. Oh, sorry. I. There you go. No. Okay. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. This is not working for me right now. Oh, we can see it, sister. Yeah, but it's not working on my computer. Sorry. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'll have to play around with this. But yeah, I encourage you to play around with it as well, um, just to get used to it before, you know, before what I did. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so that's a whiteboard feature where if you need to write, like especially for Quran, that's really useful. You could just like um, draw out the letters and so on. And here's some more features. One is called mouse control. So I can actually share this as well. Um, I'll give someone 
mouse control. Um, okay, uh, Sister Floor. If you might have uh, gotten a notification giving you control for your mouse, for the mouse, um, you can try it. If you, if you just click the screen, then it might change it. If Sister Flora is on, ah. Yep. So, so she's controlling it. So this is really cool for games, for example. And um, so we have some games set up for you. You can give your uh, students mouse control and they'll be able to play the game directly on your screen. I have a question on this one. I have tried sure. previously with my students this one, but mm -hmm. for some reason it was not showing me all the students. Uh, I, I asked them about the device that they were using. Someone was using the phone, I believe, and I was not able to give them control of the mouse. Yeah, I believe it's for desktop only. Um, if they have a, yeah, if they're on a phone or an iPad, I don't think it, it will let them. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then another feature is annotation. So everyone has this um, on their, uh, control board. If you go to the bottom of your screen, you can click annotate and then that will let you write on the on the screen. So if you want to try it, you can. This is me. Nice. I had a question. Can we uh, also have, when you do the share screen, mm -hmm. it can actually go to your phone and uh, that's great. But do we have to put uh, the information of which phone to use or does it automatically know what to do? I believe it will. Um, so I believe it's through a cable or AirPlay if it's an iPhone. Um, iPhone. I, iPhone. Yeah, you'll have to set it up that oh. way. Okay, and we can do that ahead of time or uh, do we have to do it uh, right then, right there? Um, uh, I would suggest like playing around with it because I'm not exactly sure. Let's see. If the reason why I was asking that sometimes you make drawings or do something by hand and mm -hmm. you want them to see it and you know how the laptop it can bend down to a certain level but it can't bend down directly on your page mm -hmm. so if I was thinking if I could put the phone on top looking downwards on my page so I can draw something and the kids can see it or they can draw with me or whatever. Yeah, we could definitely look into that. I think that you, if you connect it via cable like if okay. you have um, like a USB cable or something, then it should work. Um, okay, thank you. That. Yeah, let me just check the chat. Yeah. You can spotlight that. Uh, you can join from another iPhone and you can spotlight your iPhone, which is looking on your page. That way, um, you know, that will show up on the screen as the main window. You mean like uh, give the, uh, give the, what do you say? There is the power to the I, to that particular for, uh, person who joined the Zoom meeting, and basically it's me, but I can show what what I'm yeah. doing. Yeah, okay. you yeah, that's a good that, idea. That's... Spotlight that uh, phone to make sure that becomes like your uh, your spotlight screen, and then you will have two. You'll be talking through another device, but mute your device that you're okay. just using that camera. Okay, um, but spotlight that. So, and how do I give the power to the phone and I mean to somebody else besides the teacher? You can, you can own a phone. You can have your two devices, right? You have one device which you're using and then have the phone as your second device, which logs into the Zoom, but just you spotlight yourself. You, you as a host, you can spotlight that phone. To just capture that. How, how do you do the spotlight? Basically, how do you give the power to the user, which is me the, on the phone? You can make yourself a co-host. So if you go to your participants and click the dot, drop down arrow on your second device, you can say make co-host. And then um, on the top here, like if 
if I'm I'm sharing my screen so I can't show um see it, but if everyone's on a gallery view, you can click spotlight video um, at the top and that should um give that should give them uh that should make it a spotlight video so everyone will, will be able to see that screen. Okay, so now you can see everyone's um, written on here and your if your students are um, getting kind of out of hand, you can go down to this click this uh, button more and uh, click dis disable attendee annotation. So if I do that, now you, you're no longer able to annotate. So, and then the last one here is the chat feature. As you can see, the chat feature has been really, really helpful throughout this session. It can be helpful for your students as well. Sister Muna went over it um, as well, where she suggested you can even have the chats directed towards the teacher only. So that's directed towards the host. And that, will, that way, if your students who are a little shy, want to ask, or answer any, ask any questions or answer any questions, they'll be able to um, we've also um, incorporated the chat feature in some of the presentations we've created where it's um, to get the students interactive a little bit. We can just ask the question, hey, put in the chat, what's some, one thing that you found really cool from today's lesson? Everyone can just like type in their uh, chat answers. They can look through it, talk to each other, you know, and so forth. Obviously, it should be controlled. Um, I believe all of our Zoom accounts will block um, student to student chats and it will be either everyone or to teacher only. We'll have to definitely um, add that into our guidelines. Do you also add the raising of the hand and lowering of the hand in the chat thing for younger kids? Yes, so um, uh, uh, yes, so, so uh, one of the things in our Zoom etiquette policy is that when you have a question, you should raise your hand and you guys can see it on your screen on the bottom it says raise hand so if you click that the teacher will get a notification that someone has a question and then they can ask uh, the student to unmute themselves or they can unmute the student and um, they'll be able to uh, ask their question thank you okay so that's uh, on more features oh now i have to figure out how to clear that all right, um, so now the last two points I have is if for Salam Online, we're requiring all the teachers to record their classes. There are two reasons for this. One is so that um, for any, uh, just, for our, uh, just for us to um, come back to our teachers, you know, if we need to see in, um, any, uh, I can't remember the word for it, just like, um, no, no, I'm blinking, sorry. Just so that we have like uh, an idea of what our teachers are teaching, if we need to come back, uh, give any like uh, quality checks, something like that, we're asking teachers to record. But also more importantly, uh, we want the students to be able to go back to um, the class if, to review it or in, in the future, we want the students to um, be able to go back to the class to see what they've learned, if they need it for homework and so on, they can go and check it out. We, I think we will be posting the recorded classes on Google Classroom as well. Last point is on troubleshooting. Uh, we have Sister Zainab uh, Salman who will be available for Salam Online Teachers um, every Sunday. She'll be on call. So if you have any issues, if you're not able to log in for whatever reason, uh, you will be, you can just message her or call her. Uh, we'll be providing her number for that and she uh, will be able to help you inshallah. Third, uh, sorry, third point that I forgot to mention here is we're trying to um, assign two teachers and one TA per classroom because it is a virtual setting. It's going to be quite difficult. Um, sometimes if someone's internet connection is slow or whatnot, there's, if there's some, any kind of issue, we want to make sure that there are two teachers and at least, at least two teachers in the classroom with the students. Um, so that's what I have for Zoom. If anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Oh, would we know who's our teacher with us in the class? 
Yes. So if uh, if you're a Salam online teacher, I will be sending you and um, possibly making a group chat with you uh, and your teacher and your this uh, yeah, for, and your co-teachers. This is for Sunday school. Uh, which Sunday school? Uh, if it's Am your Sunday school. Okay. So then you'll talk to your um, your point of contact. You'll talk to your administration. Okay. Now. Sister, how did you remove the annotations that everybody put? Oh, so you just, um, it'll be um, a little thing will come up here. I don't think you can see it, but it has a mouse, select, text, draw, stamp, spotlight. And then there's a little trash can that says clear. If you, clear, if you click that, it'll see clear all drawings, clear my drawings, or clear viewers' drawings. So you can click any of those. I did clear all drawings, and it deleted everything. Okay, thank you. Sister Leila, mm -hmm. thank you so much for all your efforts and teaching us. Despite the fact that little one is running around, you did yeah. a marvelous job. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Sorry about the little distraction. She's. I'm <laughs> you were great. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, so um, does anyone need hello, to take? Hello, a... Sister Leila. Yes, yes, go for it. Uh, this is Abdul Jabbar Rashidi. Um, I don't know, I, um, I mean, the, um, the teacher of the Quran class or not. Can you find out uh, tomorrow I have a class or not? So for Salam Online, we are starting on the 13th. So inshallah, I will be messaging you um, soon for that. Okay, uh, for tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow there's no, classes. no, no, tomorrow there's no class. Uh, Salam Online is starting from September 13th. So next week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, inshallah, so yeah, I'll be clearing that with you um, this week, inshallah. Okay. Oh, so Thank I you do, so much. Yes. I do want to yes. mention that um, the for Salam Online, we are using basic accounts as the uh, Sisters of Eagle Road over here. Um, and anyone who is more familiar with Zoom or wants the other kind, uh, wants the features that come with the pro account, then let us know. And I also want to mention um, that please familiarize yourself with Zoom. Um, it can be fun to use. There's a lot of cool things that teachers have put online where they've used the different kinds of features. And um, yeah, it, inshallah, it'll be, it'll be fun and, and an exciting tool to use for this. Um, inshallah, Sister, inshallah. Sister Thank you. Leila, um, can I say something? Yes, go for it. Uh, this is Washma. Um, for those who have um, scheduling difficulties or need more Zoom training, um, zoom.us or zoom.com, the direct site from Zoom, um, they have ongoing sessions uh, for teacher training. Uh, so depending on your location, um, they can email you um, a class or a session to train you on how to use um, the Zoom and um, the unique features it has for classrooms. Just wanted to mention that if anybody needs to. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yes, there are some questions. Um, if you have any questions regarding Zoom, you can uh, go for it to the Zoom account. They have a lot of um, uh, cool things for teachers because a lot of teachers are using Zoom. Um, otherwise, you can also always text. Uh, so I always email admin at salamonline.education and that will, uh, we will try our best to answer that. Um, also, there is a question here. How will the teacher and co-teacher interact work on Zoom? Um, so that will be uh, up to you, how you want to do it. Like if you want to take different sections or um, and how you, you will talk to your co-teacher beforehand just to clear that up, inshallah. Uh, Sister Wajma, if you can put that uh, with the link that you said in the chat box, that way everyone can have it. Sure, I'll do that. Uh, Sister Leila, do we need multiple Zoom accounts for multiple classes to run if it is all at the same time? Yes, you'll need uh, multiple accounts, especially if it's all in the same time because you can only log in for one meeting at per time. Uh, are the teachers supposed to create the meeting sessions and send it to the students? So inshallah for uh, Salam Online, we will be creating uh, your meetings. If you need to, then uh, we'll let you know. Um, and then we will be posting it on the 
Google Classroom as well as sending it to the parents via their welcome package. So that's for Salam Online. And for other schools, you'll have to uh, find out from your administration. Okay, so if that's all the questions we have, I'll give like just I'll, uh, open the space up for a few more questions if there is. Otherwise, I'll continue with teaching guidelines. Salam, Sister Laila. Can can you tell us how to do the polling? Polling, sure. I I'm not sure if this is a feature that's on the basic account. Um, no, it's not in the basic account. I believe it's for paid accounts. Okay, so yeah, if you have a paid account, then um, it'll come down. I don't think I have it. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I have to enable it, like on the setting, but I thought you you have an idea how to do it. So um, um, no, sorry about that. I think that I don't have it either over here. Otherwise, it would show up on your um, yeah your board here, your control board, and then you just click in a poll sure. and send it out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you are interested in uh, polling and you don't have the thing, then there are like Slido or, sorry, I think it's called, yeah, it's called Slido or polls everywhere that you can incorporate into your PowerPoint um, as well. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, all right. So I'll continue with teacher guidelines. Uh, so this again is specifically for, uh, this is mostly for Salam online. Um, but other teachers, it, it is pretty general as well. So other uh, schools may have the same kind of guidelines. Um, first, we want to, every teacher to um, start the session very warmly, you know, start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, say Salaamu Alaikum. Um, so uh, also make sure that you're, um, that you're using the correct pronunciation. So we've wrote, written this on and we'll be sending this out as well, but it's either Salaamu Alaikum or Assalamu Alaikum. So that's something new that I learned as well. Uh, so those are the two pronunciations for it. And, you know, you, you, you want to be excited, you want to be warm so that your students are warm. Um, and then we're also encouraging all the teachers to start and end with salawat. We have this amazing tool for Baraka, so we should definitely use it. Uh, salawat, um, encourage your students to join in. I know the, the younger ones, my daughter loves shouting it. So like, you know, getting them really excited and pumped for starting um, school say start with salawat end with salawat you can also uh start with the dua or surah for younger kids it could be just as, as simple as bismillah for the older kids you can build on it um this will change from grade to grade and we are encouraging the teachers to you know just do whatever they feel is appropriate or whatever they feel is uh, befitting benefiting or you can ask the admin for advice we can check it with molana as well for what's the best kind of surah or, or anything for that um, we want to encourage everyone to be as enthusiastic as possible um, this is an online setting and salam online will continue to be online right it's not going to go back to um, regular school after COVID. So we need to keep get that in practice where this is our interaction with our students. Um, they can only see this up. So your facial expressions have to be excited. They have to be, um, you know, expressive and so on. You want to be, you want to, through you, you're instilling that love of learning of Islam. So just with that in mind, you want to um, get their excitement up. Um, it's very important that, like I said, it is still a Sunday school setting. When you come even on a virtual setting, you want to dress appropriately. Um, for sisters, that means hijab. Um, sometimes like our sleeves will be going down. We don't realize if you, if you feel that way, you can wear uh, those extensions. Um, your clothing should be loose fitting. Both men and women should have like that kind of uh, hijab and haya for that and then of course just like presenting yourself with good akhlaq if you know we don't know like where our students are coming from this may be their first um this may be their main introduction to islam so we want to be sure that we're showing them the best face forward and that means good akhlaq uh, we are going to ask both teachers and students to keep their cameras on uh, this 
this encourages good learning this will make it more real i guess like you know you can see your students faces you can see the teacher's face it'll help the students pay attention so make sure your cameras are on of course with appropriate background like i said in the zoom presentation um, if you need to put in a, a background uh, a virtual background then make sure that it is appropriate for a sunday school setting uh, my next point is that you want to use age appropriate language and examples. So if you're when you're rephrasing the lessons, uh, make sure that it's appropriate for your age group. If it's a, it's a younger age group using simpler words, if it's an older age group using more at their level. Um, a good, a good practice would be to go over the vocabulary before starting. Excuse me. Um, all the lessons for the steps to perfection have vocabulary. So you could even like put that up on your screen before starting or all of, I believe the presentations in, have it included. Um, if it isn't there, you're free to add it um, or just you know ver verbally going over those. Um, like Sister Muna had uh, said, uh, it's good to create a structure or routine because children really thrive on that and they'll know what to expect. Um, especially for students who are a little more excited or like, you know, they, they, they don't know, they have like shorter attention spans, they'll know what to expect. So, okay, we have um, story time from here to here or next is story time and stuff like that. So, so it's good to just keep that routine so that they, they're aware. Um, you can use the first few minutes of the class uh, in the beginning to go over the schedule. This will always help. You can do a warm up um, and then like in incorporate independent work, art activity, just as you would for a, a normal school setting. Um, next point is really important, know your tools. So yeah, we are an online school. We, need, we are going to be using Zoom. We are going to be using Google Classroom and we're expecting our students to know these tools. So we need to familiarize ourselves with it as well. Um, and that would be uh, going like, you know, just play around with it at, before uh, school starts. So you know what you're doing. Uh, look online, like I said, there's so many, so many cool um, features and online from teachers who have been using it due to COVID or just because they're an online school. You can definitely uh, find that out. And, and then once you get your access to the classroom or to Zoom, definitely play around with it, familiarize yourself with it before, it, um, before next week. Um, and then the last point, oh no, sorry, I don't have it. So uh, again, know your audience. Um, sometimes younger students need more breaks if you, especially because it's online, if you need to, um, do like a okay everyone stand up and shake or exercise or stretch stuff like that for the younger students so that they can get re-energized and definitely incorporate that into your um into your lesson okay so uh next um we are putting in a feedback process so uh, so i'm online teachers and as well as the collaborating schools if you want to um, copy these uh, you want to add these into your own handbook we are in we are sending a handbook for teachers in this there will be a feedback process um, so there's a few different we have like a few different um, entities here right we have like teachers students and then administration uh, for teachers to administration you can message the principal for Salam Online or the vice principal and then CC's admin at Salam Online. If you have any questions or concerns, you could uh, email admin at Salam Online. We have two forms for you. One is a correction form. If you see anything on the resource that you think is incorrect, uh, or any kind of uh, content that you feel like is incorrect, you can fill that out and send it. Um, and then if you have anything that you want to add, so if you've created presentations or, or you found something that you think is like, oh, this would be really great to add to the system, then you can add that to, uh, you can send, put that in the form. Uh, we have a form for that. Later, yes. sorry to interrupt you. Uh, do you mean to share your screen? Because I don't see any slide. I just see the teacher guideline. Are you sharing or? No, I don't have a slide. Sorry. I'm just, yeah, this is, 
it's just what I have up here. Um, if you need me to repeat anything, I'll be happy to. I'll also be sharing this, um, this these notes with everyone. Uh, and then lastly, we ha we'll have uh, parent-teacher conferences, I believe at least once a year, if not twice a year for the se two semesters. And we'll be discussing how that goes as well, but that will give a chance for parents to give feedback to the teachers. If parents need to give feedback, we'll also have a grievance process for that, which will go through principal, if not principal, then administration. Next, um, we will be having school-wide events, even in a virtual setting led by students. So uh, teachers will be preparing for that, for example, for Mother's Day, Father's Day, things like that. So definitely get ready um, for those extracurriculars. Um, and then every week we'll be having assemblies and we're asking the Salam Online teachers to take on one to two assemblies per year. And you'll be respond and we'll give you a sign up sheet. And on the sign up sheet, there'll be like the Islamic date and stuff, any relevant holidays so that you can incorporate that either by bringing on your students or, you know, preparing something um, yourself. And this could be like, you know, if it's coming up as like, say the Zainab's uh, Wafat and, or sorry, Shahadat, and if you want to um, get your students to like recite poetry, so like you have two students who are gonna recite poetry, you bring them into the assembly, things like that. Um, so inshallah, we'll be discussing more on that through your teacher welcome package. And then lastly, I want to mention that we have a supplemental Google Sheet. So for example, Sister Muna had shared the virtual field trip. We've gathered um, lots of different virtual field trips like that, as well as supplemental videos from Ustra Media, from um, different things we found online, I believe madrasa.net, uh, other things, just kind of like free resources that you can incorporate into your, um, into your teaching and lesson. I know some people had asked about like playing videos, so this kind of will be that, that um, bank of information where you can just go through it and choose what video you want to see. Uh, we, we can see that on uh, a place, all these links. Yes, we've, uh, we've compiled that into an Excel sheet and we'll be sharing that with everyone, including the collaborating schools. Thank you. Um, so that's what I have for teaching guidelines. Um, if anyone has any questions, please uh, feel free to ask. As participants, it's important for us to uh, kind of collaborate when the Mother's Day, Father's Day, those school-wide events happen. Is that something that could happen? Uh, sorry, can you repeat your question? You cut off in the beginning. Uh, sorry. So uh, we are a collaborating school, uh, Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible for us to participate in the school-wide events when Salam Online does them, like the Viladat or the Mother's Day, Father's Day? So there will be a time difference, but um, if you're in the collaborating schools WhatsApp group, uh, everyone can share their resources there and kind of like encourage everyone how to um, participate in their own way. Like if you want to do one for your own school, um, you can like look into the resources that we've used or anyone else has used. And that's, that's kind of like the cool thing about the WhatsApp um, group that we have is that it's a chance for everyone to network okay. and share ideas. I have a question, sister. And during assembly, you take attendance and do you do anything else besides in addition to some, uh, attendance? Yes, so uh, as a teacher, you'll be taking attendance for uh, the assembly and um, inshallah, what we're asking the parents to do is set their students' names as the first name, last name, and their grade number. So you'll be able to look through and find your grade number. And then if your students kind of like, I mean, it's a virtual setting, so I'm not sure how, but if they're like acting out or something, then, you know, you'll be <laughs> responsible. Like, um, I'm trying to, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, Sister, oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Go ahead, please. 
uh, sister, I had a quick question uh, for these Father's Days, Mother's Days, and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they can uh, for younger kids, of course. Can they draw a picture and we send it to you guys, and you show it as a slide or uh, something like that would be presented, or do mm -hmm. we collect their uh, pictures, you know, and then send it to? I'm from Sabah Sunday School, so do we send it to somebody, and like how does that work? Yeah, that's definitely up to your organization and they can definitely, um, yeah, they can definitely do something like that. Or you could even do that within your own classroom setting um, where you ask them to draw something and share it by a picture. Um, and then also, um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. But yeah, like that's on, that's definitely up to your um, administration how they want to do it. And for the poems on Hussein days and stuff, can we record or uh, send the kids, like tell them to, okay, you know, let's sing the poem together, like after practicing, mm -hmm. record it and send it to you? Because sometimes some kids are not awake or they're not on time on that particular day, but at least you have the recording with you. Yeah, it'll be, inter it'll be an adjustment from the usual, like Hussein day for sub Sabah, I'm sure. So um, I... I believe your administration will definitely um, come back to you on how that's going to proceed, inshallah. Would there be any parenting sessions for parents uh, which are not about the teaching part of, of, the, of uh, Salam Online or, or the Madrasas, but more like giving them guidance on how to parent better? Uh, not from Salam Online. Uh, so uh, I think yeah, not from Salam Online. Salam Online will be uh, Sunday school strictly. But if your organization wants to do something like that, then you can definitely do something there. Sorry, Sister Leila. Oh, sorry. Uh, sis uh, Sister Savika said, yes, we do want to hold some parent workshops. So inshallah, we will try to have some. So inshallah, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll keep in touch with everyone regarding that. Yes. Sorry, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, my question is regarding a uh, lesson plan for Salam Online program. Are the teachers responsible for the lesson plan for each uh, classes, or uh, you guys are going to give us the lesson plan for each class? So we've created pres uh, PowerPoint presentations um, for each student. Uh, I'm sorry, for each teacher, for each lesson, for each grade. and. Uh, we've created games, lesson, uh, sorry, it's PowerPoints and quizzes. Now, if you want to add anything to that, then I believe you're more than welcome to add your own teaching style for it, uh, plan the way you want to pr present, like if you want to do a warm up beforehand, um, you can also look through the slides to see if you want to add anything to it, or if you think that that, that schedule is fine, then yeah, we'll be sharing that all with you this week. My Thank question you. is related to that. Um, mm -hmm. It is, uh, are you creating like lesson, what the lesson is going to be covered for each day? Mm -hmm. And and how is it going to be split? Like you sent me the curriculum or the material, it is with four subjects, mm -hmm. but we have period one and period two. Mm -hmm. So the four subjects are to be covered in those periods or how are you going to split it? Uh, so, um, I believe we have two periods for Islamic studies um, and then there's four subjects. So I think it's two subjects for the first semester and two subjects for the next semester. Oh, okay. And then each lesson, either I, every day, I mean, sorry, every week there will be one lesson or um, I think we have a pacing guide that we'll be sharing. Sister Sabika, if you want to just send a message on that. Okay, thank you. I'll get back to you if there's anything. Okay, so if there's no other questions, then I'd like to intro. Sorry, yes, go for it. Uh, I, I just uh, happened to find out recently that uh, a parent was asking me, are we looking at any teaching strategies for Asperger's or kids with autism? So uh, currently, we don't have anything in place right now um, for, for Al Qasa Foundation, but um, we do have a Qasa family 
special needs group that is working on an Islamic curriculum and modifications for Islamic curriculum. So this year, I believe uh, we will not be able to unless we, it's like small modifications and a lot of parent help. But for inshallah, in the upcoming years, we'll be able to incorporate that. All right. Thank you so much. All right, and so if there's no other questions, then I'd like to introduce Sister Nosheen um, Tani, who will be speaking about uh, Kaida Nurania. Sister Nosheen, if you're on. All right, Salaamu Alaikum, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank every, uh, the Kissa team, Salaam Online team, for having us. Uh, with me is um, one of our uh, senior advisors and Kaida Nuranya trainers. Um, and uh, she is also with me, Fat Sister Fatima Abbas. Uh, before we get started, um, I'd like to just kind of give you a little background about um, our program and how we are implementing it on uh, 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 Salam Online and Rise Online. Um, the Kaida Nuranya program this summer, uh, we offered Kaida Nuranya course for the teachers to uh, train them. And uh, inshallah, um, so during this course, during the two months of summer, uh, we had a Kaida Nuranya course that we offered on the platform of Kisa, Al Kisa, and which we trained um, over 60 brothers and sisters on this program to learn how to teach Kaida Nuranya and uh, Tajweed and the recitation of the 30th Juz. So it was a very aggressive course. And uh, from that group, we, have, uh, we are in process of selecting um, brothers and sisters uh, from that training to teach on Salam online and uh, Rise online, both of them. And uh, inshallah, uh, with me is one of my senior, our senior advisors and Kaida Nuranya trainers who will go over um, what Kaida Nuranya is and why we are using this and how we're going to implement this, inshallah. And then after she presents, uh, we are going to, um, I'm going to show you some of the resources that we are making available and then be here to answer any, we will both be here to answer any questions that you may have for any of the collaborating schools as well, well as Salam Online. So inshallah, I would like to invite uh, Sister Fatima Abbas uh, and she will be explaining what uh, Kaida Nuranya is and give you a little background on of how this system is effective, inshallah. Sister Fatima Abbas. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Yes. You all can hear me? Yes, wa alaikum as -salam. Yes, wa alaikum as -salam. Yes, wa alaikum as -salam. Yeah. I pray you all are doing good. First, I would like to share with you what is the foundation to learn Quran. The first foundation is that the correct listening from someone who is proficient, a qualified personal person, listening of the words, then latter and then verses. The second pronunciation of the letters is the right, is the foundation of the Arabic letters. Uh, number three is the skill of reading. The recitation has to be correct. Number four is acting upon what you have learned. You apply in your recitation. Applying is more important. And the last is the understanding, the reading, the meanings and an explanation and the comprehensions. What is, why we are, uh, we have select Qaeda Nurania and why not any other Qaeda? There are many Qaeda's are available. And the reason why we choose Qaeda Nurania, the, it has all the words from the Quran. And other Qaeda, they don't have all the words from the Quran. Has not, other Qaeda's, they don't have any logical sequence. We don't know about the author of the Quran. Other Qaeda has words from Arabic language. The main reason to choose Qaeda Rania is that all the words are from the Quran, not from Arabic language. Uh, it's very old, has been decades. There are many resources available to learn Qaeda Nurania. What is Qaeda Nurania? How Qaeda Nurania can help the kids for the recitation of the Quran? Qaeda Nurania is a book for beginners to learn Quran, Quranic Arabic. It is the foundation to learn Quran. It has all the words from the Quran and to read the Qaeda Nurania on the right way you should know 95% of Tajweed. 
So just let's go through a book. What is Kaida Nurania is? Uh, you all can see my screen of Kaida Nurania. Yes. 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 yes we can. So the first lesson about it is about the letters, how to pronounce the letters properly. And here we can teach, and Tajweed starts from here. If you see here, uh, it's written Bismillah rahman rahim the name of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So before the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have Kasra, we will read it with Turkey, we will read light. If it has Fatha or Dhamma, we will read with Tafqeen, we will make it heavy. Then we have the letters here. We will we introduce the kids, the Huruful Lasaviya letters, example letter Tha, Tha, and Wa. These are the Huruful Lasaviya letters and letters of Tafkhim. We introduce these letters of Tafkhim, Khusun, Dagat, Qif, to kids. They learn here, they color the letters for their more understanding, for their deep understanding. Then we move. To the few letters, a few lessons only I will show you as we are running short of time. We move to lesson number three, Huruful Muqatta'a. Here the kids, they will learn how to read Huruful Muqatta'a. Example, Alif Lam Mim. Here we will teach them how to read it properly. Alif Lam Mim. So the common mistakes is there, like if the kid is saying me, ma, ma, all these sounds, they understand properly how to read it. Then I will just read few of them. Alif Lam means sword. Alif Lam means sword. We will do a little kalkala here. Okay. Uh, if you have time, I can tell you the reason why we are doing the Qalqala and we make understand kids too. If you see the spelling of Saud here, Saud, Alif and Dal, Dal is the letter of Qalqala. That's the reason we are doing Qalqala here. So we go in more details in the depths. Example this, Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Saud. Kaf, Ha, Ya, and so on. So they will learn here how to read them properly. Then we move to lesson number four, Adar Surabia. Here the kids learn about the harakat example. And what's the mistake? Suppose I'm taking the letter Sheen. Sheen, Fathasha. So it's not Sha, it's not She. So the foundation is becoming strong from the beginning. So it is just sha. And if you read without spelling, it's just sha, she, shu. So it's not sha, she, shu. And it's a very common mistake. We stretch the harakat. I will just take. Sorry. I will just take a few lessons. Then we move to lesson number seven. We have Alif Sagira here, how to pronounce this and how many counts are here. Ba, Fatha, Alif, Sagira, Ba. We will make proper two, two counts. Here example, Hamza, Kasra, Ya, Sagira, He. Then we moved here to lesson number eight. Here they will learn about the mud. Example this one. Ba fatha alif sukun ba ba dhamma wa sukun bu ba bu ba kasra ya sukun bi ba bu bi so they will learn the proper stretch stretch how to make proper two counts for the mud and here we have lean so here we will not give the time ta fatha wa sukun tau then we move to the next lesson here. The kids will learn about the words, how to read this. Example, the first one. Hamza, Fatha, Alif, Sukoon, Ah, Meem, Fatha, Ma. 
Ama, noon, fatana, amana. This one. Jeen kasraya maji. Hamza fataa jia. This word. Hamza fatalam skun al. So we will introduce kids here while we are saying what is the reason that we are giving Hamza tul wasil here. Why we are starting with fatha. Why not with dhamma or with kasra. Hamza fatalam skun al. Mim fatawa skun mau al mau hamza dhamma wa sagira u al mau u dal fatada al mau u da ta dhamma tu al mau u da tu. They can read with words. They can read with spellings. There's the both options here. Example: This word mawa zinu. Then in lesson number 10, the kids will learn about the Kalkala letters and about the Sifat. Example, Ba is letter of Kalkala, right? So they will learn how to do Kalkala and how to read it properly. Hamza Fathaba Skun Ab. Hamza Kasra Ba Skun Ib. Ab. Ib. Hamza Dhamma Ba Skun Ub. Ab. Ib. Ub. Here, Ta, ta is the letter in the sifat, it's the letter of hams. They will learn how to do hams. Hamza fatata skun at. Hamza kasrata skun it. At. It. Hamza dhammata skun ut. At. It. Ut. Then we have letter tha, tha is the letter of rakhawa. They will learn how to do rakhawa here. Example, Hamza fatata skun at. Hamza kasafa skun if af if Hamza damatha skun uth af if uth. Then we move to other lesson. In lesson number eleven, kids will learn the rules of noon sakina and tanwi. That's the most important rules of the jwi, and I would say that the jwi is standing on these rules. Rules of ikhfa. Anta, they can do with spelling and without spelling. And lesson number 11 is basically whatever we have learned of the previous lessons, it all applies here. Have a look at this word, how we will read. Ta fatha noon skun tan. Seen fatha alif sagira sa. Tan sa. Here they will learn how to do ikhfa. Ikhfa mufakhama, a strong ikhfa, heavy ikhfa. Here again we have hams al qat. So from the beginning they are learning the right way of reading Quran with tajweed. Ya lamuna. And then they have big words here like this. Kal farashil mabthuthi. Then they have small ayahs here. They will learn how to read these ayahs. Okay. They can learn with, they can read with spelling and without. And they can do it. Then this one. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ here they will learn how to read this word as it is a different mud. It has a mud and the sukun after this one. How to read with spelling and without. Hamza fatha alif mad lam sukun al. Hamza fatha alif sagira al. Noon fatana al. Ana. Then we move after harakat, we move to shadda. How to read with shadda? Abba, abbi. Then we have again shadda, first shadda in the words, and then you have the big words here. Example here, saddaqa, qaddara. Hamza fatha alif 
how to do the spelling of this word lillahi example lam kasra lam shadda lil lam fatha alif saghira la ha kasra hi lillahi without spelling fasabiqati ihdina sirat al mustaqim fa in al jannata we move to other lesson example here these words alliyina here how to start al muzammilu then we move to lesson number 16 and there are only 17 lessons here the first word here dot fatha alif mad lam shadda da lam fatha tin lan da hamza fatha ta damatu atu ha fatha alif mad jim shadda ha jim damma waw mad nun shadda jun nun kasra ya sukuni atu ha then this is the last lesson here here they will learn practically all the tajweed rules are in this lesson example here we have the rule of the noon sakina and tanwee the most important chapter of tajweed how we will read this one i will just read without spelling to save the time rasulum min allah this one qulubu yawma idhin wajifat absaruha so these are the rules of noon sakina and tanwee then we have the rules of mim sakina here inna rabbahum bihim lahum ma yashauna this one the last word with spelling and without spelling i will read both of them hamza fatha lam shadda al lam fatha alif saghira la ha dam mim shadda hum mim fatha ma allahumma so this is basically the all the lessons of qaida nurania there are 17 lessons and the kids from the very beginning from the letters they move to the complete tajweed then when they start the recitation of quran 98% they are on the right track they are reading properly they are giving the letters properly they are pronouncing them the harakats are good there is no issue they are not stretching the harakat unnecessary it's a very common mistake they stretch like qaqiqu so that's wrong qaqiqu they know how to stretch they know how to read huruf al muqatta and mashallah many of us our adults still we are struggling for reading huruf al muqatta so they know from the very beginning how to read it majority like 98% is problems are there are no problems they know how to read and anywhere they stuck in quran again they will go back to qaida nurania they will do the spelling and they will read it right so without like if teacher is not supporting still that kid kid has sense how to read it yeah so i can see a lot of chats but i wasn't reading yes yeah, so inshallah we'll try to answer as many questions as i can um subhanallah so do you have anything else to add mashallah that was very 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 like informative uh, very positive uh, feedback on the chat Uh, and one more point i have to tell you um, me and sister nasheen we just took some kits and tried to apply this practically just to see the results and subhanahu wa taala alhamdulillah uh, i think nasheen how, how long was the time period uh, yes when we when i gave you those uh, uh, young girls they were around 5 6 7 they were all under age of 10 and mashallah in a 6 months period 
they had finished Qaeda Nurania, they had knowledge of Tajweed, and they were up, able to apply in the 30th chapter when they started reading. So even for me, going through that the first time was very amazing results, Masha. I had never seen that in my experience of uh, being part of Sunday school for so many years. And so, we, uh, yeah, I would also like to add one more point here. And the kids know, like uh, we just make the small uh, notes for them and they know, okay, uh, what what is the kalkala? They know, okay, Qutub Jad from lesson number 10. So like this, they start Tajweed from lesson number one, from the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they start, okay, before the name of Allah, if you have Kasra, you will read it light, you will not make it heavy, you will read it with Tarkik, then you will make it heavy with uh, Dhamma or Fatha or Dhamma. So from beginning, they are starting and they are learning. Yes, uh, mashallah. The, the, I mean, we have practical experience and basi basically uh, this technique we use to teach 65 of our uh, teachers who had uh, signed up to be trained for Qaeda Nurania. And like I mentioned, inshallah, um, for Salam Online and the full-time Islamic school Rise Online, we are implementing this system, inshallah. And we have trained 65. I mean, they're still in training still. They are still continue to train with us, but we have selected a few of them who did well on their pretest and uh, will um, start teaching, but we will also be with them and uh, Sister Fatima Abbas and we have a brother's instructor as well who has um, uh, taught the brothers and he will also be, all, we are all a team and we will be coaching them as they teach, um, uh, teach the students on Salam Online. And so inshallah, inshallah, um, uh, uh, with that, um, I'm going to show you just a few resources real quick, um, just to give you an idea what you'll have access to on the Google Classroom. Um, so I will share just really quickly. Um, I, you had seen it in the uh, beginning of the presentation that we have added um, uh, these resources on the Qaeda Nurania. Um, so if I can just share my screen really quickly, and um, I know we are short of time, so I'm not going to take too much of your time. And I just want to leave a few minutes to answer any important questions that I can. But if I'm unable to, if we are unable to answer the questions, uh, we will, um, we, 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 we can, you can contact us um, through email, through any way possible and ask your questions. So can everybody see my screen? No, we're no, just seeing the Qaeda Nuraniya book. Yes. The PDF. The yeah, yeah, sorry. I okay. Okay, let me try again. Okay, now can everybody see my screen? Oh yes, now we, we can see. Okay. So this is, um, I'm sorry, this is a part of um, our, uh, the website that we have created, but all these videos that I'm about to show you, some examples are all available on the um, Google Classroom, the Quran resources that is will be available to all of our collaborating schools. But just one very important point that uh, in order for you to be able to use these resources in the 100 prop, uh, percent proper way and be able to get uh, good results, uh, you must be trained for Qaeda Nuranya, like our 65 teachers. Now they have some knowledge of what this is and have the background. So then it makes sense how to use and how to implement it. But we are making it available to you. So inshallah, when and in, in the future, we are able to offer some more courses for the rest of the schools, we will do so and you will already have these resources. So just really quickly, the first lesson right here, um, you see on your screen, it comes with a video, okay? Right beneath it, right here. Okay, I think I clicked on it. Um, yes, right here, okay. We have the page of Qaeda Nurania, the PDF version where you can see then um, we have a video. So I'm just going to play just a couple seconds of it just so you can get an idea. Uh, 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 با تا Okay so that was the first page same i will just show you one more just so you can get an idea you can use this um this uh, also uh, to teach your children to sh demonstrate to your children listening um plays a big role and when you teach your children they are able to mimic 
We adults sometimes have a more challenging time when we try to mimic, uh, but the kids are raw and fresh, so they mimic much easier. So I will just show you one more lesson. And this will all be available to you to look at and, um, and for our teachers to use when they teach Kaida Nurania. Okay, so um, since we are short of time, I'm not going to open everything else up. Um, but there are two functions of the 30 juz, which is with hijab, meaning with spelling and one without. So basically it opens up the entire surah and um, basically spells it out. So it kind of applies the Qaeda Nuranya with um, the Quran. And uh, it is a self-correcting method. I know someone asked, you know, how this helps. Um, it actually helps them go and correct themselves without actually trying to remember. And um, it and this is um, the method that we use to teach Quran. And Alhamdulillah, our teachers that the 65 teachers now, mashallah, have this knowledge. And we are going to move forward with um, implementing this at Rise Online and Salam Online. Um, and please feel free to go back and look at these resources. And uh, if you have any questions, um, I'm more than happy to. Uh, yes, one more thing. Sorry. Uh, there is also a app on our um, iPhone and Android devices that can be downloaded. I will definitely share that with everybody. It looks exactly like what you saw on the YouTube video, um, but it is an app which uh, you can customize it, like put it on repeat uh, as many times as you like for extra practice. I always tell the parents to use this as a facilitator and to teach them with this instead of your own voices because we all have learned in different ways. Um, and uh, the kids just need to spend even like a five-year-old can just spend maybe 10 minutes using the app and you can play the lesson as many times as you like and uh, put it on repeat and each lesson is designed that way. And what's the name of the app, sister? Yes, Kaida Nuranya uh, app. I, I will uh, share it with you on the group um, uh, while the other presentations are going on. I will send the link on there. So those who would like to download it, uh, it works on iPad, Android, iPhone um, and uh, it is basically becomes your child's teacher and uh, it also works for adults. We, we used exactly the same training method um, teaching uh, the 65 teachers that signed up uh, and we went through this entire Qaeda and then applied it to the recitation. Thank uh, you, sister. I saw, uh, I, like you're saying, I put it down and there are multiple choices, but I think it would be great if you send it to us with the picture of the icon of, of the app. Yes, yes. I will, I will actually put it on in the chat um, as soon as uh, my presentation is done. So I will add it there. And uh, so that way you guys can download it. And uh, me and sister Fatima Abbas, we are available for any questions at any time. Um, if you have, you know, um, if you're confused about something, but I'll just take just maybe a couple more uh, questions, uh, any important questions that I can answer. Many of you have the similar questions. So um, one important thing that I think I keep seeing in the chat, will there be more courses? Inshallah, uh, with the, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be inshallah able to offer some more courses in the near future. Inshallah, next year, uh, maybe we can offer it to our collaborating schools. But as of right now, with the amount of teachers we have right now, we are only going to be able to accommodate Salam online. So um, inshallah, we'll start from there and then inshallah, uh, be able to help the other schools that may want it. If there's any other questions um, that I can answer right now, I can yes. answer. Sister Noshin, uh, do you have any tips on how we can make sure the children actually learn Tajweed when we are only doing it once a week on Sundays? Uh, Sister Fatma uh, Abbas, do you have any, uh, can you answer that question if you have any advice on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, when we were teaching to the kids, uh, the session was only twice a week of 30 minutes. And uh, what I used to do, we just go to a quick minute, few minutes we take and we do a revision. And the most, uh, the benefit of Kadan Rania, as you will go along with the chapters, with the lessons, you will have the words from the previous lessons. Example, um, in lesson number, suppose 11. 
you learn in lesson number 10 how to do Kalkala. In lesson number 11, you are applying that. So you are just revising the lessons too. And it's very important when you are learning, revision is the key. You have to revise. Uh, anything else? Um, I'm going to, while our other brother, uh, our next uh, presenter is presenting, I will try my best to answer any important questions in the chat. No, uh, number one. Uh, sorry, excuse yes. me, sister. I, I just want to know this, uh, the system of hijjah uh, or hijjah you are doing spelling. Is it necessary to teach to the children? Yes. The reason is, uh, when, yes. They will, yeah. mm. when they will move to Quran, from Surah Nas example, they know how to do, how to read the word with the spelling. So you don't have to help them a lot. They have already learned from Quran, uh, from Qaeda. Their foundation is strong. They know the right way. They are pronouncing the letters properly. So you just have to, you know, guide them. You don't have to teach them. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, uh, thank you so much, uh, Sister Nasheen and Sister Fatima for your presentation. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, you can ask in the chat, or how do you want to do this? Yeah, um, okay. you can let them ask in the chat. I'm also going to put my email address in there. And if anybody wants to privately email me with any specific questions, I'll be more than happy to help them. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and then next, I want to invite Brother Amin Asif from Noor Kids, and he is going to talk about supplemental videos uh, for character and akhlaq building. Uh, Brother Amin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Um, when I was a kid, I used to love playing baseball. My mom, she would come and she would sit in the stands and she would cheer. But friends would start to tease her. They would make fun of my mom because of her hijab. And as a kid, I didn't know what to do. I began telling my mom to pick me up 15 minutes after my baseball games were finished because I didn't want anyone to see my mom. I didn't want anyone to know that I was a Muslim. I wanted to fit in. Now, years later, um, when my niece was born and for the very first time when I thought from the perspective of a parent, I thought to myself, you know, how can we solve this problem? How do we help Muslim children not just learn about Islam, but develop a love, a pride in their identity? Alhamdulillah, at that time, uh, we were also students at uh, Harvard University and had the ability to research this question from a academic lens. Um, how do we help build confidence in the identity of our Muslim children? Uh, Insha'Allah, um, uh, today, uh, over the next 15 to 20 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about um, what we've created with Noor Kids and also um, how we are hoping to supplement the amazing work that's being done by the Kisa Foundation. Um, before I get started, I just want to briefly say Allahu Akbar. I know you guys have been in a training for a long time and I just saw the uh, agenda and so I know that I'm the very last speaker. So I will do my absolute most to keep this uh, energetic and, um, and, and, and valuable. I do want to just share one quick note before I get started. You know, alhamdulillah, in the last um, five years, we've had the opportunity to travel to um, something like 350 communities across North America. And um, what uh, is clear to me, uh, looking at the Zoom video and the 111 participants here, and I know the videos are all, you know, off. So, you know, perhaps you might be cooking dinner right now or doing something else. Um, but I want to um, just let you know how important your role is. Um, the Islamic upbringing of our Muslim children, uh, given that most of our communities don't have a full-time Islamic school, are, are done by weekend Islamic schools. And um, for children who are growing up in these weekend Islamic schools, um, their understanding of Islam on earth is you. It's the work that you're doing. And so I, I, I'm so excited and so like enthusiastic that mashallah in our North American community, we have 110 amazing human beings who are taking uh, this responsibility. And I know that this year is going to be difficult and, 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 and perhaps different, um, but I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barak on the efforts. And I'm very hopeful that our work with newer kids uh, will be uh, valuable. So with that, um, I'm going to share my screen uh, and I hope everyone can see this. Um, and inshallah, I'm going to um, uh, get started. 
So, um, you know, really when, when we created Newark Kids, there were two key problems that we wanted to, to think about. The first one was around um, confidence and identity. Uh, today, one in two Muslim children every year is bullied because of their uh, Islamic faith. This is work that was done by CARE, uh, actually in the Bay Area. Um, uh, and, and so there, there is this piece around, hey, how do we build confidence given that? But there's also a second piece that we are aware of, which is uh, the fact that the fastest growing religion in the world and in the United States is actually agnosticism and atheism. So in this context, how do we you know, build confidence and identity of Muslim children? As I mentioned to you before, alhamdulillah, um, you know, this led us on a journey wherein um, we had the opportunity to study at Harvard, at Berkeley, and San Francisco State University. What I want to do in the first five minutes of this conversation is just share a little bit about what we learned. The first thing that we learned was the importance of age. It turns out by the time a child is nine years old, a significant part of their lifelong identity has already been established. So think back to that story that I talked about. I said, hey, you know, I was 14, I was playing baseball, and I was ashamed. Uh, oftentimes, you know, when we see an identity crisis, that identity crisis isn't happening when the child is five years old or seven years old. Um, that happens in high school and college. But what we must understand is that the roots uh, start at a very early age. Um, and, um, you know, according to the traditions of uh, Imam Ali, um, uh, you know, th th there is a uh, belief that, you know, these first seven years are, are very critical in that, you know, uh, that is when we are rooting the uh, identity of our children. But number two, what we discovered was, uh, look, um, uh, what we teach during those first seven years, those first nine years, uh, are critically important. Um, and, you know, we have to be a little bit thoughtful with respect to what we teach. Um, but then also, uh, we have to be thoughtful about how we teach. Now, with respect to what we teach, um, what we discovered was that, look, there were three key areas that were exceedingly important for us to focus on. One relates to character or akhlaq. Now, we, of course, know that our Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, um, you know, says in a very famous tradition that the purpose of religion is makaram al-akhlaq, right? Moral perfection. From a secular lens, it's also very fascinating. These traits like gratitude and patience and self-control, honesty, these are the engine that allow us to thrive long term. You know, there's this phrase, give someone a fish, they'll eat for a day, teach them how to fish, they'll eat for a lifetime. Character represents that engine that allows uh, us to um, thrive. Uh, even if, for example, we are victims of, you know, uh, discrimination or oppression or any of these types of things, character is really essential to our long term growth. The second piece relates to citizenship. And when we say citizenship, we mean our obligation as Muslims towards our family, our obligation as Muslims towards our neighbors, our obligation toward, uh, as Muslims towards our environment, so on and so forth. Now, this is also quite fascinating. Uh, in Arabic, we would use the word hakun nas, or our obligation towards humanity. That's like the best kind of uh, translation for, for this. But um, what's fascinating is, um, you know, Noor Kids, alhamdulillah, we had the opportunity to complete uh, one of the most robust studies of Muslim children in North America. We sampled 500 kids across five cities uh, in North America to understand, you know, how these five to nine-year-olds are understanding themselves. And what we discovered was that there was a significant issue with belonging. Many of our Muslim kids don't feel like they belong within their American society. So how do we solve that? Do we just try to fit in? No, it, we, I mean, we don't want to compromise our faith. We believe one of the ways that we solve this is through what's called citizenship education, uh, like these uh, items I talked about. Simply, if, if, if we were to tell a child, it is your religious obligation as a Muslim to, for example, be concerned about the environment that you live in. If it is your uh, obligation as a Muslim to care about the neighbors that you belong with. If, if it is your obligation as a Muslim to care about the animals in society, because you have that responsibility, in effect, it begins to feel like, hey, look, this belongs to me the setting belongs to me. Um, and that's why, you know, this uh, area is very important. And then of course, Aqidah or beliefs, you know, what are the core beliefs that we have as Muslims? Now, the reality is, um, you know, teaching something like gratitude or teaching something like self-control, how can we do that? Can we just say, you know, beta have self-control or like, hey, you know what, you know, be thankful. Of course, that's not the way um, 
that, that's, that's not the way that we can imbue character. We have to be thoughtful with respect to how we teach given these uh, topics. Um, so our approach, and, and again, just looking at the slide real quick, what we teach was character, belief, and citizenship. I talked about that on the previous page. How we teach is the use of a couple of things, right? So the first thing is role models. Um, when a child is able to put herself into the shoes of a uh, person and say, wow, like this person is just like me, that person is able to actually role model what identity looks like. What does it look like to be Muslim in America? Uh, but not only that, storytelling in this way is really effective because it's almost like a case study. A child can think about, wow, like this is a very relatable experience. Someday when I'm in that experience, what would I do? A second thing is what we would call tafakkur tadabbur, contemplation and reflection. Um, and, um, you know, for kids growing up as a religious minority, it's important that we help them understand why we believe in what we believe. Um, and then, of course, the, the last piece being parents. Parents actually play the most important role with respect to the uh, development of identity among kids. And I won't spend too much more time uh, talking about this, although I get really excited about it so I could talk about it at length. But suffice to say, we took all of these learnings and we turned it into Nora Kids. Now, I hope that many of you may have heard of Nora Kids uh, so far. If you haven't, um, I'll just briefly to explain, um, beginning in 2012, about eight years ago, we created an akhlaq building program. The way it works is every month, families get a new children's book delivered directly to their home. And then in addition, every week, we do a live online uh, class. It's for kids ages four to nine years old. Alhamdulillah, this has been really successful. We've reached um, almost 250,000 families across um, 25 countries. Um, and so Alhamdulillah, um, uh, across the entire like Muslim uh, community in, in North America, uh, we've been able to really make a, um, I think a really amazing impact. Um, and that said, I wanna transition a little bit to say, okay, well, why am I speaking with you today? The reason why I'm speaking with you is because in March when COVID-19 hit, a number of communities reached out to us and said, look, you know, we're moving to distance learning. I mean, how can newer kids be of assistance? Um, and alhamdulillah, I had the opportunity to also work with Molana Nabi Abidi as well, um, who, uh, Michelle is doing an amazing job with the Kassaf Foundation and this being a reflection of that. Um, and the number one problem that we heard teachers and schools express to us was, look, it's very difficult to um, keep the engagement of kids in kindergarten and first grade and second grade and third grade and fourth grade over distance learning. I mean, look, you know, normally when we're in the classroom, we're doing activities, we're reading books, we're doing things that are interesting for these age groups and spending 30 or 40 minutes behind a Zoom call, uh, uh, isn't that engaging? And again, I know it's two o'clock and I'm just thinking how, um, uh, how everyone here is doing with respect to the Zoom call, but it's tough. So what we decided to do is uh, take our um, 120 stories. So since launching, we've actually produced 120 of these stories based on this curriculum um, uh, and uh, basically turn them into videos. Um, and so these are uh, storytelling videos that a teacher would be able to embed into his or her lesson plan. So imagine if you're using the Kisa Kids curriculum or if you're using the resources that the Kisa Foundation has provided, you know, if you think about, okay, well, you know, in this first module, we're going to be discussing the concept of Tahara or, you know, in this first, uh, you know, concept, we're going to be discussing the concept of, um, uh, of belief in the day of judgment, so on and so forth. Uh, the teacher would be able to find one of our stories from our catalog of about 120 of them and basically embed it into their lessons uh, such that it is uh, very engaging. Um, I wanna show you what this platform looks like um, just so you can uh, get a sense. Let me just pull it up real quick. Okay, so um, I hope everyone can see my screen, uh, but basically, um, uh, schools and teachers will get access to this portal. And um, in this portal, uh, there's one section first where it says how it works in training where folks would, you know, be able to learn a little bit more about newer kids and the overview of the curriculum, how to use it, so on and so forth. Uh, but like I mentioned, remember there was that curriculum, um, uh, this curriculum here, uh, you know, there's blue, green, and yellow, blue being character, green being belief, and yellow being citizenship. It's organized in the same way. So if a teacher were to click on belief, 
um, they would be able to see all 12 of the topics that we cover, prayer, charity, fasting, hajj, prophethood, modesty, perseverance, Quran, soul, intention, hereafter, and shaitan. And then within each one of these, we have between two and four stories. Um, so the teacher would be able to find that story and then uh, use it. We also have a brief topic overview such that the teacher would have a sense of, okay, well, what, what is actually in this story? Um, so that way, um, you know, she he or she could get a sense of it. Of course, that's the belief section. There's a citizen se section as well. Again, 12 topics, environment, family ties, bullying, friendship, food and halal, civic engagement, cleanliness, so on and so forth. When they click on it, um, you know, there's between two and four stories that they would have in here. Um, and then of course we have the character section as well. Um, patience, gratitude, honesty, sharing, generosity, self-control, judgment, fairness, humility, integrity, courage, forgiveness. Um, and then, you know, when they actually click on here, um, you can like, uh, just to show you like, what does a video actually look like? Um, so the teacher would be able to like, for example, play this video. Um, I recognize, I don't think that the sound is, the sound may not be working because we're on Zoom, um, but um, it's, it's like a storytelling program. Um, uh, these were recorded before I got my haircut, uh, so it looks a little bit different. Uh, but uh, alhamdulillah, these, these are quite engaging. And then I just want to also mention, embedded into every one of our stories are critical thinking questions that you can see here. So what would happen is, is while the video is going on, uh, the instructor, me, actually tells the teacher, like, teacher, you know, please pause the video at this point, so that way you can engage into a discussion with your uh, students. Um, alhamdulillah, um, I'm really, really excited about this resource. And um, just to give you a sense of why I'm excited about this resource, you know, for us to create these 120 stories, um, it's been like an eight year investment. Um, nearly $600,000 of like effort goes into the development of all of these books. And we have basically put them all on such that specifically during this COVID situation, schools around the world are able to benefit from this. Alhamdulillah, since launching this effort two weeks ago, we have about 100 schools that have signed up for this uh, from as far as Azerbaijan and India and Australia, but of course also in uh, the United States of America and in Canada. Uh, so I wanna just briefly talk about some of the questions and like how it works. Uh, so first, what is the price? Um, so in the spirit of transparency, what I want you to know is that um, the normal price that we've been charging schools for this is $699 um, to say, hey, look, you know, schools, all of your teachers can access this and benefit from it, so on and so forth. Uh, we talked to uh, Molana Abidi and he said, look, I mean, like, come on, man, do something better. So basically, at the end of the day, our hope is just that schools are able to use this. Frankly, um, if you are unable to contribute, that is fine. If you're able to contribute anything, alhamdulillah, of course, we'll appreciate um, you know, your contribution. Uh, but um, really, we're, we're not putting a price tag on it. Um, uh, any school that is interested can have access to this. Um, we recommend you provide a contribution of any amount. But again, if that's an issue, please don't worry about it. Um, you know, how is our content created? Alhamdulillah, we have a team of 15 people, um, uh, Islamic researchers. We actually have like professional writers that, you know, work for Houghton Mifflin and Simon and Schuster who are like are able to create amazing stories that make it really engaging. Um, but uh, primarily I want to share with you that we work with uh, Sheikh Rizwan Arastu, who is a uh, qualified Sheikh um, in the Shi'i tradition who um, helps advise us to ensure the, um, you know, uh, that, that, that the uh, work is appropriate for um, children in the, in the Shi'i community. How many teachers can access this? Um, for each school, uh, we have the ability to provide 20 logins. Um, so again, the intention here is not to provide uh, the login for the children uh, or students. The intent here is for uh, the login to be for the uh, teachers um, so that teachers can use this in their, uh, uh, in their classes. And then, you know, the last question is, you know, perhaps what are the next steps? So basically there are two things that you have to do if you're interested in this, you must take these two things and you must do them. Um, the first thing that you must do is you must go to norkids.com slash schools. Uh, and there's a quick form there where you put in a little bit of information. It'll take a minute to do maybe two minutes, but, Definitely not longer than two minutes. So you have to, uh, you have to do the form. 
Uh, the second thing that you have to do is um, uh, we ask that you schedule a one on one meeting with us. Uh, and again, the goal of that meeting is that way we can provide access to your school um, and uh, you know, give you any of the information that you might be missing. And those are just 15 minute meetings. So it's not a long meeting, 15 minutes. Um, and if you go to norkids.com slash meet, you can set up that time. Um, really, it's as simple as that. Uh, if you do those two things, um, we'll be able to provide access. Um, now, finally, before my time is uh, over, and um, if there are any questions, please put them in the chat box. Um, I do want to just share uh, two more just quick things that I feel uh, uh, appropriate to share here. Number one is um, uh, outside of this program, um, we have done work with uh, uh, communities, Islamic centers, uh, to actually provide our um, akhlaq building program. Remember the one that I said, which is a monthly subscription, so on and so forth. Um, uh, we provide it to communities at 50% off. So say, for example, the community would like to, you know, be able to provide it to, you know, families. We provide it at 50% off, which is a really, really, really good value. Um, so again, um, I'm sharing that with you just so you're aware of it. And um, uh, again, if you're interested in it, the, the link is norkids.com slash meet in order for us to set that up. Um, and then secondly, um, I just want to reiterate, um, Oftentimes, uh, especially in the context of COVID-19, there's been a discussion among educators to say, look, um, we have to be thoughtful about this year. We can't just kind of throw this year away. And the reason why we can't just kind of throw this year away is because um, our children depend on it. Um, you know, when you think about secular education, if a child falls behind in reading or in math or in English, um, that's something that they'll have to catch up on. And if they don't, that could potentially stick with them for a long time. And I think as parents, we understand that. But what I don't think that we have adequately appreciated is falling behind in religion also is a big deal. Um, you know, we have existing curricula that we use and Mashallah Kisa Kids has a curriculum which is uh, really robust, but it's sequential, right? If a child doesn't learn wudu this year, um, well, then what happens next year, right? Um, and so I share that uh, uh, as a reminder as uh, my time is over to say, um, I really do uh, sincerely pray uh, for the, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses all of your efforts for the teachers who are on this call. Um, there's perhaps, you know, 75,000 Muslim or Shi'i families in, in the United States of America. Of them, 112 have decided to join this call. Um, you are a select group of people and, um, uh, there is a great honor in the work that you do um, and of course great responsibility in the work that you do. Um, so I hope it just serves as a reminder to, um, you know, um, you know, a pat on the back, but also a, um, you know, let's hit the ground running this year and really make sure that inshallah, even though many of us are doing distance learning, um, it is a successful year. Um, with that, if there are any uh, questions, um, it doesn't look like there are any. So um, I will uh, pass it back to uh, Sister Layla. Thank you, Brother Amin. Um, if there are any questions, do you want to put in an email or something on the chat for them to reach you? All right. Thank you so much, everyone. We are at the last leg now. Um, just some action items and then some conclu concluding remarks from Mulan Abdi. Um, so next steps. For collaborating schools, uh, if you have filled out the form, you've received a spreadsheet. Um, in that spreadsheet, you need to put in the number of classes that you will be required um, for Google Classroom. And if you haven't received a spreadsheet yet uh, and you filled out the form, I'll get that uh, to you soon. If you haven't filled out the form yet, uh, please send me an email at admin at salam online and I will send you the form and the spreadsheet. Uh, inshallah, we can get uh, that set up for you. 
it's important to have the number of classes and approximate students and approximate teachers. So for example, if you have like two grade twos or two great kg classes, then you want to place in that you need two kg classes for a Google classroom. Um, next is uh, your point of contact. So on the form, there is a form for a contact, uh, point of contact that will um, receive a notification when they are added into the Google Classroom. And then that point of contact will be putting, uh, will be placing the teachers into the classroom. So again, your point of contact will invite the teachers into the classroom for your school as a collaborators, collaborating school. For um, Salam Online, you will get a notification as a co-teacher that we will send at admin at Salam Online. We'll send a notification. You'll in, uh, accept that. And then, um, and then uh, you'll also be receiving welcome packages, which will have more information like handbook, teaching, uh, teaching guidelines, teaching strategies. And then additionally, everyone will be receiving this uh, this presentation and uh, the recording of this presentation. Um, we have two WhatsApp groups. One is for the Salam online um, teachers. So if you are on there, you'll receive all the information through there. If you, and then the second WhatsApp group is for Salam online collaborators. So you'll be receiving the, um, any information through there. If you're not on there, please uh, send me an email at admin at Salam online. Also, if you can volunteer some time, this is the last week. We need to get a lot of things done. So if you have some time this week and you are ready to volunteer your time, then we can really use your help, inshallah. So also just email admin at salamonline.education. Uh, now I'd like to invite Molana Abidi if I have missed anything or to, you can add it or um, and then just conclude thanks inshallah. Thank you so much everyone for sticking through the whole uh, whole five hours of this alhamdulillah. Uh, Molana. Okay. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. It's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless us inshallah. I would like to go uh, with some of the points. First and foremost, I would like to thank all the participants and also those who presented today, uh, especially Sister Laila and her cute, mashallah, daughter. I know that she deserves to have more than all of us. And you sacrifice her time and you give it to us. And maybe that's not right, but Alhamdulillah, our du'as and our prayers will be with you and your family, inshallah. That she, a cute girl, inshallah, she's going to be the future leader. And when we hunt someone, we don't hunt only one person, mashallah, whole family and generations, and you will be uh, connected with Ahlul Bayt, inshallah. And also, I would like to thank Sister Sana and uh, uh, her mother. Uh, in, initially, I thought that Sister Mona is a sister of Sister Sana, but Sister Mona, she said, no, I'm her mother. I said, okay, take that. Alhamdulillah. And they did a fantastic job. And also Sister Naushina, and Sister Fatima, Alhamdulillah for their outstanding work. Uh, I would like to mention a few points about Qaidi Nuraniya, though that Qaidi Nuraniya, uh, is one of the tens of other methods which exist out there. However, uh, the, uh, because Qaidi Nurania is one of the unique method which has its uh, a complete nine-yard system for teaching and so on and so forth, we want to go with that at this time. And nonetheless, we still have our own uh, curriculum, Kisa Kids curriculum, Brother Salim Sofi and his team, they're working, alhamdulillah, and those who are with them uh, are the, uh, the uh, Kisa uh, curriculum still, they can inshallah continue that and there is no limitations. And the Qaidi Nurania clips are the videos they can use as a, uh, supplemental resources, inshallah. Uh, and also that is the beginning. Then once they finish from Qaidi Nuraniya, then Mawlana Jawad Wahidi and his team, as uh, I'd like to mention that Mawlana Sayyid Jawad Wahidi and his brother Sayyid Abadar Wahidi, uh, we have incredible team and both of them, the Qari and Hafid of Quran, especially Sayyid Jawad Wahidi, he wants to inshallah dedicate his time. He will be there and want to go for different layers, uh, whether for the uh, uh, Rawan Khani, which 
which is recitation or tafsir or uh, mafahim and also hafz and so on and so forth. Alhamdulillah. Uh, then, Alhamdulillah, we had Brother uh, Amin uh, from uh, Noor Kids. MashaAllah, their contribution is uh, appreciated by uh, lots of uh, families here in America and elsewhere. May Allah bless him and his uh, entire team all the bounties and blessings. What a great martial team we have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, Brother uh, Amin. Jazakumullah. Uh, as uh, all of us, we are aware that, alhamdulillah, we started from 8 in, uh, eight Pacific time, right now close to 1. Alhamdulillah, all five hours. Although we want to go uh, uh, by till 3 p.m. because we did not give any uh, breaks and also we find out that mashallah lots of families they want to travel and they want to go somewhere and we started with uh, 160 and 70 people and we ended right now as 111 families are the teachers i know that uh, some of you guys you are representing whole your school uh, as a key person or contact person some of you as a principal or teachers or so on and so forth it's amazing it's our blessing to have all of you uh, to uh, uh, this great collaboration and I'll, we're going to inshallah end uh, soon uh, so inshallah you can catch up with your uh, family uh, staff or what or you want to do in this uh, long weekend inshallah with the barakat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahlul Bayt I would like to mention brothers and sisters just we started because of this COVID-19 alhamdulillah I know that a long way to go and Islam institution and Islam online could be a great platform for various, uh, uh, you know, the uh, services, including teachers training and so on and so forth. I would like to humbly request and appeal all of you, those who can contribute in any way, in any capacity, I would like to uh, uh, in, you know, uh, invite all of you guys uh, to be part of this. Like, for example, Sister Wajma, Sister Wajma, uh, she, mashallah, she said that I can uh, contribute in any way. Alhamdulillah, we had her this year, uh, Vice Principal, Alhamdulillah, and inshallah, Brother uh, uh, Azhar and Sister uh, Uruj will going to help her uh, to have all of these, mashallah, great uh, uh, blessings. And I know that uh, uh, how uh, it uh, you know uh, takes from your uh, you know personal life, family life, your priorities, and all of that. But end of the day, what I know is each and every one of us we can stand tall in front of noble Prophet Islam and Ahlul Bayt that we contributed with our capacity in this part of the world. And I know that whatever you do, inshallah, you're doing the job of the prophets and imams, and you will be torched, you will be light, you will be guide, you will be light, and you will be the source of barakat. And truly, you are the true game changers for the future generations. If we don't put together our collaboration and your our uh, you know work, we cannot achieve. That's why it's very important that teamwork, whatever you do, maybe sometimes you think that is a very simple thing or maybe is not much of that. Please don't hesitate and please share with us. So inshallah, we can uh, share with other people. And if there is anything we can collaborate, please let us know. If anyone's doing the same work, please let us know so we can drop some of the things and we can uh, you know, cl collaborate with them because our intention is not to compete each other. Our intention is not to, for example, um, you know, take or anyone. No, we, our job is to watawasaw bil haqqi, watawasaw bil sabr. Together, we can achieve uh, lots of blessings and we can have lots of uh, ni'mat and rahmat. Again, I would like to thank our great team, those working behind the scene. They're not, they don't want to be, sh you know, mention their names. I know that they are doing fantastic job day and night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, once we have our own LMS, I know that lots of, lots of uh, sisters and brothers, they have some questions about LMS, uh, why we are using uh, the um, Google Classroom and so on and so forth. Inshallah, our goal is to have our own LMS. Brother uh, Mahmoud Hala, he graciously uh, donated his uh, LMS Jot Academy to us and we are working, uh, inshallah, to bring to uh, what we want to and want to make sure that it's uh, functioning for our purpose and we want to have all the features and all the uh, necessary tools to 
uh, have that. That could happen, inshallah, maybe in a couple of months or before next year. Inshallah, by that time, these are the limitations what we have. Everyone, they have to collaborate with us. Then they have to go through a system. They will give a password and so on and so forth because the LMS Google Classroom and the free uh, version doesn't allow us to go with all of that. Even if you paid that, you cannot have the luxury of what you can unless you have your own LMS system, inshallah. So with that, I would like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to bless upon us and all the Muslim ummah and upon all the Islamic centers and the schools, all the uh, educational institutions and all of you, parents, family members, mashallah, children, students, uh, teachers, admin, principals, and board members, those who are doing day and night for mashallah sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the blessings and bounties, especially the great blessings and bounties of Ahlul Bayt, Karbala, and inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include us with Imam of our time and Shahada of Karbala. I would like to thank again all of you, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless, uh, bless you all, Jazakumullah. Uh, if you have any question, any comments, please don't hesitate and please uh, let us know and you have our email address and you know the uh, salam online dot, uh, dot education you can go there and you can reach out to us inshallah so if uh, no um uh, Malana Abidi, just two quick questions if we wanted to contribute financially how can we do that and is salam uh, online is is there a need for financial contributions thank you zakallah inshallah i know brother amin because he's running uh, the institution, educational institution, he can understand that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we welcome all the uh, collaborative, collaborative schools and uh, centers. If they can contribute uh, financially, it will be a great help for us. Right now, we are uh, in a huge uh, deficit uh, uh, for this uh, Salam Online institutions, uh, the, the initia initiation and all of that. Uh, initially, one of the brother, he donated, uh, mashallah, 10K to start some work and uh, as all of us we know that those 10k for uh, quite like maybe a month or two survived and then we ran out of that well alhamdulillah uh, with the help of other brothers and sisters like you guys we are surviving and the reason we don't want to charge anything from the collaborative schools is based on the COVID-19 situation and your circumstances. We don't want to put extra burden upon you guys. You can use our services free, but anyone contribute, it would be our honor and you'll be part of this Nobel Prize. Malana, one question uh, regarding this uh, financial system. Uh, if you could, uh, uh, we could have a, a small sort of a presentation, uh, sort of information about KISA working everywhere so we can use our context and to make uh, give uh, that presentation to them uh, just sending them on their uh, whatsapp numbers for example and uh, asking them to contribute whatever they want it's a great idea mashallah uh, inshallah see uh, sister Laila khan please note that and if we can make a small uh, video clips or any uh, presentation uh, that can help people understand uh, the scope of what we're doing uh, inshallah Thank you, brothers. Great, uh, uh, you know, advice. So, brother, I mean, you. my honor, my honor. Yes. Thank you, brother. I mean, you have any other question? Uh, no, I don't have any other questions, Malana Abidi. But I do want to just uh, uh, just share, and I, I know that the, the the folks on here, it's been a long day, and and, and so on and so forth, but. Genuinely, uh, Milana Abidi, the, the work that Kisa Foundation is doing, you know, there's a concept, of course, you know better than me, wajib uh, kifai, right? Like if, if there's a need, somebody has to do it. Someone has to do it, right? If, you know, someone passes away, somebody has to, it becomes wajib on us. You know, as I think about our, our, our Shi'i community in North America, um, somebody has to take the leadership. Somebody has to do it. And um, Milana Abadi, it's clear that uh, the work that um, the team that you have has, has, has done that. And I think that the uh, webinar today is a reflection of that. And of course, the work that, 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 that you're doing is a reflection of that. And I know that sometimes it's difficult for someone in your position to, of course, ask uh, for, uh, for funds or anything like that. But I, I, I want to um, just make sure that the, that the folks understand that um, 
if Kisa kids did not do this, what would we have done for our communities this year? That alone hopefully should help us reach into our, you know, our pockets and uh, feel a desire to inshallah help support this not just for salam online but inshallah to help promote the vision of uh all of the efforts that kisa foundation is is doing so i um i i know Mulana abidi would not tell you this but i i know having talked to Mulana abidi yes there is a, a a serious significant need for financial contributions um Mulana abidi has a track record of excellence all of the uh, uh books behind him is are, are a reflection of the um, uh, um, uh, amazing amount of work that's just been done in the last two three years like it hasn't even been that long so um you know if individuals on this call you know everyone is in a different circumstance but truly um don't even wait for sister Layla to send you a video just go on the kisa uh foundation website and inshallah today, if you can do even a hundred dollars or whatever, anything that you can do, again, this is not a fundraiser. Mulana Abdi did not ask me to do this. I just feel a obligation to say this because I, I know how important it is to support this effort. Um, and and I, I know that the folks on this, uh, uh, on this webinar are likely the people who understand the value of the work that they're doing. So inshallah, Allah puts barakah on it. And, and I really hope, don't, don't wait, don't wait for the video. Inshallah, even, uh, e even for us, um, inshallah, we'll, uh, you know, make a contribution today. And I hope other people do too. Thank you, brother. I mean, uh, for your kind word. And uh, I was not uh, <laughs> planning to announce this at all. But thank you, Zakallah, Asabakun, Asabakun, Ulaik al Mukarabun, and you uh, will going to receive a huge reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this noble, humble, and also sincere appeal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, inshallah. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I know that it's a long time, uh, a long day for you guys, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Uh, please recite a salawat for that cute, mashallah, sister Laila Khan's daughter, because she is up from I don't know how many nights. As she has to go through all of this, mashallah. She did fantastic. Please say the salawats. Special thanks to Sister Ella. She's, she's such a role model for me. I, I'm learning a lot from her doing all the work that she does with a little one. It's unbelievable. Thank you, Sister Layla. So, uh, best... Allah, everybody. Jazak Allah, Sister Layla, and her team. Excellent work, excellent. Thank you, Zak Allah. Inshallah, Sister Wajma will go reach out to you guys. Inshallah, Sister Wajma. Inshallah. All of these great, mashallah, responsibilities. I just uh, want to mention that um, while the presentation was going on, Brother Ali and I planned on the parent and student orientation. Um, it's going to be this Saturday, um, September 12th uh, from 10 a.m. Um, we're aiming for an hour or two. Um, we have an agenda in place and we'll get the yeah, I think you're cutting. families as well, so you can notify your for, um, the online students were planning the orientation for them this Saturday. Thank you, Zakla. This is the video, Alhamdulillah, we're looking for. And Alhamdulillah, while we are having a, a great time here, Alhamdulillah, our team, they're working and planning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them, inshallah. Thank you, Sulana, so, and your team. Thank you so much. <laughs> You know, all this, your mashallah words and your you know encouragement is appreciated. Thank you, Zakir. Thank you, Walana. Um, is there going to be a parent, uh, as, as Sister was mentioning, for the collaborators also? Yes. What we can do is we can have uh, uh, you know the uh, different uh, sessions. One session we can, inshallah, we're planning for our own salam online, and see if we can uh, you know, uh, the include and invite all other parents is good. If not, at least what we can do is we can inshallah have uh, you know, uh, the uh, series of the uh, parents uh, uh, workshop also during the year and that will be open for uh, Salaam Alain collaborative, collaborative schools also inshallah. Uh, also, I mean, I mean, if you all can just have a video recording from, from, your, uh, from your team for the collaborator parents, 
uh, so that would be helpful no no we are we are trying to have that because we can uh, host up to 500 uh, uh, people in our zoom no link because maybe some of the parents they have specific questions and we can inshallah comment in that that's also and also beside that we can have uh, during the whole year because it's going to be ongoing for the parents also it's not going to be only one session different types of sessions inshallah we're also uh, creating videos for Google Classroom, just short <laughs> videos um, <laughs> that will share like how to go through Google Classroom as a student, as a parent. So that will be uploaded on our website. So we'll share the links for that too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Salaamu What's her name? Lela? Marzia. <laughs> Marzia? Mashallah. Mashallah. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. You did a great job. So, uh, Sister uh, Laila, you uh, moved completely to uh, Fremont? Yeah, to Hayward. I'm back. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Back into the Bay Area. But it's still Hayward half an hour from Sabah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm used to that. <laughs> it's good. Alhamdulillah. We still come. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Please tell your uh, yeah. husband and your mashallah. I know you're in love. Mama. Mama. Sorry for stealing. Thank you so much. We are me and you're the one. Okay. Thank you. I had a question. Can I ask you? Uh, yes, go ahead. Um, Molan, are you there? I'll try to answer if Molan is not here. Oh, did he leave? Yeah, I'm um, here. Can... Oh, you're here. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask if um, th if there are students that are on Ry um, the Rise Academy, Rise Online. So um, can they come on Salam Online, or would that be enough for them for their Islamic studies? If anyone who is enrolled in Rise Online, mm -hmm. all what you see, the Islamic mm -hmm. studies are all the uh, uh, things you can uh, get from. Uh, uh, the rise online and rise online we're going to provide everything what you're going to get, get from rise on uh, salam online so if okay. you are a student uh, of the rise online you don't need to be part of salam online okay thank you so much that's a really big thank you Jazaka. So, okay, inshallah, Sister Wajma, we're going to inshallah have uh, a better um, uh, chop you know, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, outcome, inshallah. And then please have a, a team uh, meeting with Sister Oruj, Sister uh, you know, Laila, and Sister Sabika, and uh, uh, Brother Ali. So, inshallah, we can have a better result. Inshallah. Okay. Um, so is um, it's Sister Speaker's going to plan that and call that meeting? I think from the onwards you should be. <laughs> oh, <laughs> absolutely. My my honor. That's why I wanted to clarify. I don't want to. <laughs> you will be mission person. You coordinate. You take okay. care. My I'd honor. I'd love to. Uh, I'm at your service. Sister Sabika will be there. Everything, but you tell us what to do. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate. I'm so humbled by this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I'll be in, in touch with everybody, inshallah. Inshallah. Please have a communication, inshallah. And Absolutely. Okay. Any other questions from participants? Thank you very much. Thank you all for participating today.
Bye. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here today. Good afternoon. Shia Manula. Shia Manula.